the need to adapt to challenges, the need to have a collaborative working environment. And you can hear this word a lot today because it's true, is collaboration, the collaboration that Matt and I have. What we've done in the past couple of years together, um, there's conviction and there's collaboration to dig in and reflect and say why. When you can collaborate. I think it's the way they collaborate. Um, we think that uh, their collaboration will result in the right decisions. The leadership, the collaboration, the adaptability, again, the collaboration. It's the collaborative relationship that Matt and I have. So when you look at the whole product and the collaboration. It's a collaborative effort. Again, I, I've told you about the collaboration and, and nothing's changed there. So it's been a great collaboration. I, I know we keep on using the word collaborative, but it's so real. It's over, Johnny. It's over. She agrees with the decisions that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. The following show is for mature audiences only. Shy City Sports. Watch the tape. And when you see the tape, you know, the tape doesn't lie. And there's just, the tape doesn't lie. Former teammate Olin, we're having a little debate on Sam. Where's your stance on this offensive line, and what have you seen from them? Um, it, it's it's been up and down. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, just you know, with the whole COVID thing and injuries of Jenkins in the beginning and Broom in the in the beginning of the season, but um, I, I think they're um, they're you know they're they're surprising me in some ways where they I mean they got better. Um, you know, despite so many people being hurt in training camp, um, that was that was a big issue. You know, like you had all these bodies and they were looking good, and you had saw a lot of youth, and then all of a sudden injuries just started happening left and right. And um, uh, I, I think there's a bright spot there, obviously. Um, but they just, you know, the Bears, the way this season has ended, they seem to kind of screw up the vision of what you have. Um, I had a vision of these young tackles getting their reps. And, and it, it was going to be hard to get, kind of get Jason Peters out as well as he was doing. Right. Uh, but by, you know, by, by you know, football gods, you know, he, he, he has an injury, which wasn't, you know, nothing too serious, but allowed – Jenkins to get in there. Now you got Jenkins. Now you got Bone. You want to see these guys, regardless of the, the mistakes. You want to see them get these reps. And these are the important reps, especially your rookie year, to be able to get this. And then all of a sudden, Bone goes with COVID, and then you know he's back, and then you decide to go with a Fetty. And I, I mean, I just don't understand. The reasoning, the, the the thought process, you know, and it, it, it makes you look at the whole realm of the organization. You know, Maggie's supposedly on his way out. We haven't heard anything from Pace. What he's been missing the action, MI, MIA tucked underneath the rock. You don't, you, I mean, you don't see anything of the guy. So you, you ultimately think somebody on top is going to make these decisions. Like, hey, play these young guys. I don't know. I don't care about a Fetty getting, you know, maybe it was because he's going back to Seattle. I don't care about that. I'm looking at what's best for the organization. And that just kind of blew me when I think you had something as far as just kind of building towards next year. At least one thing we knew, we have five guys up front for next year. They're going to be our, our future, possibly. You know, obviously we got contracts coming with Daniels and the question mark with Mustafa in the middle. Um, is he going to get better? Is he, what is, you know what I mean? Like things of that nature. But at least you knew you had a line that you had a vision for. And if you could have ended the season with that line, you're going into the next year, the next offseason. And that's huge. 
to be able to say, okay, I got Jenkins at one of these tackles, Burroughs at one of these tackles, Daniels, Whitehair, Mustafer. At least in the season that way, you know what you got going into the offseason. Like, you know, that's a nucleus you can build off of. But of course, they mess it up, you know. So, but I do can't figure it out. And I think Juan has done a great job. I mean, just, you know, what he's been able to work with. I think you have to look, take all things in consideration. Um, I mean, some of that, Steve you, know, <laughs> you got, I mean, some of this, you got to listen to what people are saying. And it's clear as day. You got your so-called professional analysts who are saying the same, these same things. You know what I mean? Right. Um, um, it, it's clear as day. Shane has said, but sometimes they take the other role. And I'm hoping yeah, that's for the- once we we take this road of getting the right people there's so many qualified get let's get your head down let's get our football ops let's get our get then get him in there now let's go get our general manager now exactly let's and so on and so forth and i would be all for what shane's talking i mean that's what all i've been saying obviously your former teammate's been my guy before anybody's talked about it. just having olin in there and i know it's become a kind of people jumping on that bandwagon but i believe in olin the the person to be in charge of finding the right gm and the in helping find the right coach for this organization that has been hamstrung by the pussification of the chicago bears is what i call it and it, the fucking tevin jenkins situation yeah when he goes after the fucking guy in Minnesota and a Fetty comes over there. What were your thoughts on that in, in, in real talk? Well, let me tell you the first person who contacted me was my brother, a fellow office lineman. Yes. Na- nastier than me. Nastier. Than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he reminds me like of an Olin type of guy. This right. didn't care on the field. And uh, he saw that. And he's like, did you see that? I must have walked away. I was like, what happened? He said, you got to see you know, Jenkins got in the kid's face and the Fetty snatches him up, like, get out, you know, and I was like, okay, I had to see this. And I saw it, I was just like, what? I'm like, but you know, then I go to like, you know, where's, I guess Daniels and uh, uh, Whitehair are not really leaders. I guess that's one thing. I right. mean, is anybody right. just jumping up in there? And this kid jumped up to be the leader. And then you had this veteran come get in his face. Yes. You know what I mean? like. So that leadership, like they need a dog, like they they need a dog, like Jenkins, man. He, yeah, he's right. got wants to be fiery, and it's going to have. You think it's a fucking brotherhood? You yeah. guys do every. You guys move in concert. You guys go to the cafeteria. You guys sit down the same way that you line Bowling, up on the field. That whole dinner, thing. But you know when the, when the running night. game is is rolling. When you're when you're connected on deep balls. The, the crowd is going you get that fucking swag and i'm i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna defeat this motherfucker across the line for me each and every time we line up and with these guys now it's like jermaine and Fetty's like all right man no 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 don't get physical no yeah. come on come on rook come on yeah, rook. you have to have an edge man and Damn just right. just just thinking about the o-line and going back to that one more time just how we were yeah. we had an edge you know, regardless of now, we could tell. You know, I always say we 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 had good line problems. We just didn't have the quarterback or their skill positions to get the job done. We could run the ball into them nine, ten man fronts. It didn't matter. We had this certain mindset that we knew it was on our back if we were going to have any type of success because we had we had to play without a quarterback. We knew we had to run. Right. Well, we had when we had. Um, Jonathan the Quinn in there. We knew we had to run the ball to win the game and let the defense win. Offensively, we had to run the ball all the way down the field and score running the ball. And we were like, you know what? That's what we on. That's what we're going to do. And, and there's something about getting on the roll when you just start gashing people. We just dominated them. We just know we got them. I'm like, they just, we come back to, we're sitting on the sideline. We're like, man, man, we got these dudes. They, they, man, they on the skates right now. We got them on skates. Let's keep rolling. Rolling. We all you impose, you impose your will on them. Yeah, coming off the ball. This, and, and it's the type of style of plays. We're going straight down here. Power, power, power. Two duo counter 
outside right. zone, inside zone. Not all this jet formations, pitching side to side, <laughs> lateral. Go up the field. Let's get physical. Let's get two on one. Knock this dude off the line of scrimmage. Let's get up to the second level. Let's roll, gashing. And, and uh, this offensive line is not quite built that way. I don't know if they. Uh, it's going to be a lot of things. Once you start getting that person in there, you're going to start seeing the transformation of this, of the, of this roster. After okay. probably, you'll start seeing some things this year, but then like next year, you'll start really oh. seeing what's yeah. what. Like. Give me some fucking names. Give this kid two fucking games. Give me some fucking names. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. I was trading up. 100. Yes. yes. What? Oh my Here it is. Just no competition. They kept it real the dynamic dude with that you love the smartest man and talk to Phil Break it down the film, never a problem, kick it straight Most shows focus on stats, we focus on the tape We keep it in a hundred, never running east or west We coming with that truth, cause that's what our fans expect Cut off the freaking anchor, moving forward to be free But don't you worry, Shane's got the dumbest tweets It ain't no secret, Phil and Shane got some haters But now the mouth stuck like the two and now and later Debaters, straws get kicked like Coach Tabor Cuts have to be me, we added a barber moderator. Up and down, boys got you double checking. Sad sack strolling like a full drunk texting. Flexing on the truth, cause you know they'll never change. Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Shane. What hundreds is what we do when we're breaking down the bears. Fuck a play or a captain, all of the up The never lies. The truth, you see, we laugh, we lie, so there's no way he's like Maybelline. Straight to the truth with acumen and facts. We got a sad nerd, but he's not just giving. Nerd stats. Every Wednesday night, you got the smartest man in Philbat. Now we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun day. We're back better than ever, and we're keeping it a hundred. Keeping it a hundred. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. the barber and this is shy city sports keeping it 100 listen after a dominant win against the giants we get to have another bye week that's right we get to say bye bye matt Nagy. next week let's do this we got another great show for you tonight we got friends of the show and self-proclaimed sexiest man at ttnl mikey tenarelli coming on the show so let's bring on the boys there he is Let's bring on the boys. Shane, the smartest. Give me some Marcel. fucking names. Give this kid two fucking games. Give me some fucking names. Yes. We got to start, right start it off the right way. We got to start it off the right way, guys. Breaking news. The tape never lies. Network breaking news. <laughs> Three years, thirty-seven point five million, 
Chucky wow. Leno gets paid tonight. Speed bump yeah. Charlie they're, keeps they're, stealing. No, they're breaking it. They're changing their name. Washington Walruses. That's yeah. They're, they're changing their name to. I just found it out. Breaking news. There you go, Claudia. Thirty-seven point five million. Wow. I t- listen. Well, hey. Injures their quarterback, gets paid. It must be nice. It's like a fucking weatherman. Could be yeah, wrong Brad, all the time. Partying and partying in the city tonight. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be partying, just like this guy. She agrees with the decisions w- that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. Man, that guy was fired up on Sunday. Fuck out of here, Ted. (laughs) Ted turning and looking like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is, listen, I'm nervous because we are dealing with the Antiques Roadshow. That's what it fucking is. They can't fucking figure it out when it's wrong. It's like that kid who tells you fucking Sabaro is a fucking great pizza. It's like, what are you? What are you talking about? Remember Michael Scott drove all the way to New York to get (laughs) Sparrow? That's his spot. That's what the Chicago Bears are to football right now. And and again, happy birthday, Virginia. Hallis McCaskey. But she's been part of the problem handing it over to the Suns. She's pissed off, Phil. He told you that. He told you that 10 years ago. I'm sure the guys who fucking invested in the arcade are pissed too. They can't fucking get tokens filled anymore. Every everything they've ever done is late. It's late to the show. How about this guy today, Shane, telling me fucking the McCaskies hired Nagy? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> oh boy. Ryan Pace hired Nagy. Let's just get that. One hundred percent. Yeah. My, Ryan Pace drafted that Trubisky. His, that was Ryan Pace first. signed Glennon. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Pace. So. We could continue on. There's no Ted and George don't do anything with football, they said, except hired Pace. They hired Ernie Accorsi to find John Fox. That's the only thing. That Shane, you and I could say historically that Ryan we, Pace probably who we got was in the chat to. room, Phil. Wow, Look at this guy. Wow, Cam Badge. Wow, it's not beige. Cam, good to see you. Good to see good you. Good to man. see you, Cam. Cam, welcome back to Keeping It One Hundred. Welcome back to the the uh, chat room and in true TTNL fashion. Oh, I'm not going to do you dirty like that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Cam, I don't know if you knew this, but Robert Quinn, the guy the blog boy said sucked last year, and this network was defending him and putting our reputation to it. You'll see when he's actually fucking healthy. Watch the fucking tape. Instead, broke Richard Dent's sack record that stood for over 25 years. Oh. These guys will tell you the best ability is, is, is availability. Sign Leno again. <laughs> Sign Leno again. The PFF. Oh, my own. Imagine if we were building this team. Remember that night Love the to. Vikings and Bears played where Matt Nagy was at his most maniacal we've seen him. He's in the ref's face. Yeah. Fuck Jenkins is pushing people and a Fetty's calming it down. No one wants to fight. No one wants to be in a battle here. That's the pussification of the Bears. Finally, Coach Nagy got pissed. Maybe they held his personality down. That's on him. Like You have to be the personality of your team. The team is a reflection of the head coach. Guess what? I think one writer, I can't remember who wrote it. I want to say David Haw. And I'm not a big David Hall fan, but I'll try to get him on the show and tell him that because I haven't agreed with him. But I did agree, and I believe it was him, that he said Matt Nagy was hired to come here and build an offense. Made it worse. He made it worse, right? Exactly. And in his presser the other day, not today, Monday, after the game, all he did was talk about defense and not getting turnovers. 
because it's a shoe salesman gig. Vic Fangio did what he did. That's why he was coach of the year. The defense isn't your instrument, Matt. You decided that. That's why you wanted to call plays. Big plays are nice. And it's unfortunate that we're going to be breaking all this stuff down, debating with people. We got our first guest lined up. Early. He came in early. Came in early. That's what she there. said. That's what she said. <laughs> Hopefully she's not saying that for him because I know this guy's engaged. That's not how you want to start out a marriage, Claudio. Yes. Let's go, Jenkins. That's confirmed from Adam Schefter also. Give Next. me a tackle yep. or give me death. Now, there's two things in that drop that's so important here before we bring Mike on. Shane says it's confirmed by Adam Schefter, not Austin F., the Bears blog or any of these fucking guys that think they're, oh, I'm the fucking answer to the clues. And I, sources, I have sources. I have more sources than they have sources. And mine are very small. So just like me, I got, I got, I beat you <laughs> to the joke. But the reality is everybody could be a source. The only fucking person, like today, Matt Nagy lied. He knows they said what he said, right? I'm a pretty good source. Yeah, he's a better source than Austin and the Bears blog. Matt, are you going to be fired? I'm a pretty good source. Yeah, he's a yeah. good source. We're going to get into all this stuff. I'm getting fired up right out the gate. 88 out the gate. I'm so excited. Keeping it 100. TTNL. Almost one year and a half. Here yeah. we are. Not two years yet. One year and a half, Shane. Unbelievable numbers, subscribers. Claude's just jacked up. There's one game left. <laughs> That's it. Season's mode. over. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Claudio, Claudio looks like he could be a bullfighter right now, the way he's got his mustache and... <laughs> He could be out in the ring. You're gonna you go fight like Spanish. Those, I need to go fight those girls at Dunkin' Donuts across <laughs> the world. I am. I'm turning down. the fucking music down. <laughs> Listen, we got our first guest. He's in the city, somewhere. I don't know where, but he's somewhere in the city. He's also a former player, friend of the network. You know him from The Bachelorette. He's a reality superstar, a Instagram sensation, and Claudio, as you said. He believes he's the best looking guy on TTNL. Here he is, Mikey T, Mikey Tenarelli. This guy was a contestant on the ninth season of The Bachelorette. Well, isn't that special? He was eliminated in week five. Sounds familiar, Detroit Lions fans, Bears fans, TTNL fans. Get up. And hand your final rolls over to Mikey Tenarelli. Oh, yo. there he is. There he is. Yo, can you do yo? Yo. <laughs> does it better than Claudio. You there's do no, it better than Claudio. No three Just second dramatic him. pause with nothing coming out like Claudio does every <laughs> single week. So listen, What's up, fellas? Glad to be there, back. It's been a while. There's yeah. former friends of the show, as you're coming on, Vincent sharing this, are saying Todd Bowles. Now, Shane said Todd Bowles back in October on this network, thinking, where would the future lie? I just wanted to make sure, because, Mike, as you know, as a friend of the show and a friend of the network, we've been all over this shit. People, I, I think my boy Brandon... Levingston said it best today, and I really thanked him publicly. Like, these writers are fucking printing shit that we've been saying for over a year, all coming out now, everything we've been saying. So here we are on the precipice of what this network stands for, firing Nagy. And what are your thoughts here? Obviously, your former player, you know what it's like. I mean, me and you have been step for step in a lot of this, but... The Nagy go obviously is gone, but do you want Pace going with him as well? Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, there's no other option. I mean, you've seen 
I just jotted down a couple of stats. I know stats are for losers, but in this case, they're on our side. So Ryan Pace, <laughs> seven years with the Bears, right? Yeah. 414 yes. winning percentage, zero playoff wins. He drafted two pro bowlers, okay, drafted. And, you know, the, those stats speak for themselves because how do you how do you keep a guy like that? I mean, if you want him and Ted to uh, – collaborate their little asses off and, 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 and worry about Arlington Heights, that's fine. But if, if he's involved in anything that has to do with football, I think it's a huge mistake. Yeah. I'm Can anybody you. guess the two pro bowlers that, that, that Pace drafted? Cohen and Jackson. You heard it too. Damn it, Shane. <laughs> no, he is my, what's my nickname, man. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and I'm not the self-proclaimed best-looking guy either, by the way. Thanks, Claudio. I appreciate it. <laughs> Patron 222, yeah, Mr. Ryan Pace. We've been trying desperately to get him on the show. He's probably watching tonight. I'm sure he's got a big bowl of laughter you know, he's been here for seven years. It's amazing when you think about it. Obviously, we can go down the mistakes. Forget the Pro Bowls drafted. I'm trying to th think of the positives. Was was it Phil Emery or was it Ryan Pace that got Akeem Hicks? That was Ryan Pace. So Ryan Pace, yeah. that'll There's be a check positive. in his box. Yeah. Um. Khalil well, Mack. Mack trade, I think I would still do that today. Oh, so that's that's yep. a double. And I see a lot of let's let's stay on the Khalil Mack thing real quick because we're moving to the offseason. Same shit I said about Robert Quinn is gonna stand for Khalil Mack. If you're a fan of football and a network and you're just a blog boy fucking fantasy land guru. Your take on Khalil Mack is that, oh, we can trade him next year, and we got Robert now. You were the same fuck that said Robert Quinn sucked. Know the game of football. Khalil Mack is what every defense, offensive coordinator is game planning against. He's the best player on the field every Sunday when he's there. He was not healthy, playing hurt for two years, sacrificing his body. You guys wanted fucking Leonard Floyd out there, you fucking dumbasses. You're sitting there arguing with tape. How do you argue with tape? You have to be some fucking nerd with an agenda and a math equation. Doesn't work like that. Khalil Mack is going to dominate next season. And when you have Travis Gibson, a young buck, Robert Quinn, and Khalil Mack, that is whatever head coach. Well, that's what's going to give you relevancy Harbaugh. next year. Exactly. There's Any be coach coming in here is like, we got pass rushers and a young quarterback. Okay. So yeah. all these little fucks that are writing these power rank Jaguars. Who fuck <laughs> wants to go to Jaguar? Go down the list. The Raiders. Raiders or Bears? Come on. Let's fucking figure this out in truth. Not with the radio guys and not with the bullshit. I had to go on a mini rant, um, Mike, because the, the Khalil Mack narrative is so forgotten. Like he's the Great. reason you went to the fucking playoffs. In Phil, I had a guy on, I believe it was on me? Facebook, tell me that defensive coordinators don't have to game plan for Khalil Mack anymore. I was just like, oh my, what God. are we? I'm like, what how do you feel? You know this, here? and I'll know the answer. It'll be quick. How do you game plan if you're an offense if you, against Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack? What do you, what do you do? That and what what's the plan? You. That forces you into terrible situations. The thing that everybody forgets is that what we said, we're watching the tape. Then I, I know players on the team telling me Phil and a former player went out of his way when he left to say, Phil, there's two guys that shouldn't even be fucking playing. This is 2020 now. And it's Khalil and Robert. They're just going out there and trying to show leadership, but they're fucking injured then Khalil takes the break tries to come back finally gets this you know the things he, he needs so let's just think about what Mikey's saying here because two healthy Not edge great. rushers this is like what you had when you were winning championships anybody fighting that Khalil Mack isn't game planned for 
has no fucking football acumen. It's these guys are just getting clicks or whatever they're doing on NFL Network and all the. It was like Kyle Brandt defending Matt Nagy. It's like, what are you fucking doing? You think these fans have had enough? You think we're dumb? It's ridiculous. And Khalil Mack, I've shown many times, Mike, as you could see, and I do it on the patron side. We go on defense. This guy was leading the NFL when he got hurt. Leading the NFL in sacks when he got hurt. That's your big go-to stat. So he was, and then he was done. He shut him down and decided to get healthy. Good for him because he's deserved it. Because I'll tell you right now, the former player went out of his way to tell me that shit, in, not because he was defending Mac, but was so crazy that he could even be out there playing. So healthy Khalil Mack returning next season is a selling point, not something you're trading away. To get more picks for John Wood and let's trade David Montgomery too. <laughs> like what you you are giving away foundational pieces for the possibility of a, a real head coach coming in here. That's not how it should be. If, so I'm sorry, if, I had to get on the Mac thing because it, no, it's, it's fresh it's, in it's, my it's head. So right. Every I mean, I mean, you've you when you talk and, and same with you, Shane, it's like you guys are speaking my mind all the time. It's uh you know, how, how do you, you know, how do you even talk about trading a guy like Khalil Mack? Mack and Quinn, if I'm correct, they're in their early 30s, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah, Mack is okay. 30 and Quinn, I believe, is 31. Yeah. Now, they've had injuries, right? Maybe it's age. Maybe it's just because they're just unbelievably explosive. Pass players. rushers age well. That's the right. thing in the NFL if you look at them. Right. Look Pass at Richard rushers. Dennett, Trace right. Armstrong. We traded him. He ended up going to lead the league in sacks with the Raiders, for God's sake. He was like 35, 37. They, they easily got four or five more years of, of, of high-level playing. I'm, I'm 39 years old. I'm in the best shape of my life, okay? Yeah. At 31, 32 in the NFL, when your entire job is just to play football, when you have a nutritionist, when you have a, a strength and conditioning coach, when you exactly. have all that, these guys are on the top of their game. If you even consider getting rid of one or two or any of those guys, it, those two guys are just as much of a selling point, in my mind, to a new head coach as Justin Fields is, honestly. I know it's a quarterback-driven league, and I know the quarterback's the most important position in football. But if you're Jim Harbaugh, if you're – uh, you know, Todd Bowles, wh whoever you, you, you know, knowing football, knowing you have those two guys uh, on your defense, it's just how, how could it not be enticing? And then also to what you said, Phil, all these, you know, articles are coming out and all these people are talking and they're ranking the, the potential cities that, you know, are going to have a head coaching vacancy and Chicago's at the bottom of the list. How is Chicago in, in any yeah, world at the bottom of the list? It's, it's, we talk about it all the time. It's it's you know the second or third biggest sport sports market in the country. Uh, you know the Bears are beloved beyond belief. If if you win with the Bears, you're, you're God. We, we talked about Michael Jordan. We talked about all that and win a Super Bowl, go to the playoffs, have have a good you know a, a good team for five or six years that's constantly winning. You're you're on a pedestal like none other in this city, none other. Yeah, you're going to see, we've talked about it here, you're going to see a redistribute, they're going to have to redistribute some of the funds on this team to even it out and push some of it over on the other side. And a guy that I love on this team that I think 100% is going to be ushered out the door is Eddie Goldman. It's He's going to get you back around. I mean, he's still only 27 years old. That's the sad part, but I just don't think Eddie loves football. I think that's what it comes down to, and he's, you know, Last couple of years, he when he's on, he's on. But it's there's zero consistency there. I just feel you've heard me talk about it multiple times that you know question his his love for the game and totally love the player when he's when he's on. But that right there, I think it's around eight million dollars that'll bring back to the Bears. And you're gonna. I don't think you're. Unfortunately, I don't think you're gonna see Akeem Hicks back. I think that that's Just why. Just gonna show you this, guys, fellas. You gotta yeah. figure out a way to bring this guy back. You're talking about heading yeah. the game, passion, everything. You gotta figure out a way to bring back Akeem Hicks. 
that it's all going to come down to yeah, it's all going to come down to to money with him. What he's asking for, and the coach that comes in here is going to define if Akeem Hicks comes back. Uh, Obviously, I think he's got a sour taste in his mouth in regards to. I'll just say, gotta stay healthy, man. Yeah, the coach that's here. I think one he, question I had real quick, Shane, and you're, mm-hmm. you're probably the best versed at this, is the way NFL contracts are set up. I don't really know much about it, but is there a way in today's NFL with the CBA and all these guys being unionized and everything, is there a way that you could sign Hicks to a, a, a you know a deal where uh, it, it's it's kind of tiered? So you know, let's say Akeem, you're going to make you know best of the best money for your position if you play. 14 or more games in 20. Yeah, you, you can do – there can be escalators and incentives. I mean, that was – you saw everything that went on with Antonio Brown. He had – I guess it was around a million dollars in incentives that he could have hit that he has no chance at now. The the problem with Akeem, he's got one of the the biggest fish in the pond at as his agent at Drew Rosenhaus. And – you have to look at who's behind him. The, the guys that are behind him aren't as good as Akeem Hicks when he's on, but the Bears structured the deals behind him as two-year deals for a reason. They gave Angelo Blackson a two-year deal. They extended uh, Mario Edwards. They gave him a two-year extension behind Akeem Hicks, and it it just comes down to availability. And yeah. I, those guys I, can't carry his helmet. I hate to tell you. Oh, no, no, no. Healthy. Yes. I mean, Talent I don't wise, care what age he is. You, totally you see the explosiveness. Phil, totally you guys agree. all break it down. <laughs> totally agree, broke him down. I mean, what he did, even when he decided to play. Um, but if are you going to pay against Akeem, the Packers? He was, dominant. are you going to pay Akeem Hicks $12 million for six games? If, when you, if, if, when you if have really that money tied up there, yeah, if he really wants I think to be you a can bear, do. Will something he accept the tiered deal, you know, incentive will he put his money laden, his mouth is? Right. incentive laden deal with a yeah. veteran football player like Akeem Hicks is where you need to go because if you love the game, you listen. You, if your concern is his health, like Shane's saying, and we've seen him banged up, he got hurt against the Raiders in England and was out for a long time, and then again this year, he missed two, st- two stints. Uh, obviously, he came back last weekend, but there's no questioning the talent. And this is another thing that trumps down into the point of the coach. He's the guy that should be carrying a C on his chest. I was just going to say he, that. Yeah. He's a guy that this team and the young players, he, if given the opportunity, would be able to possibly whip some of these guys into shape that are young, like Eddie Goldman. Maybe he plays harder, or yeah, maybe I, he's got, gotten out of the. I off think the Eddie's team. is between the ears. I just don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's another pace Eddie, resigning. Eddie is the kid, and at the time, it was warranted. That's the that's the thing. It was warranted at the time. Then COVID came around, but Eddie as was well as his shape. Eddie was the biggest kid in seventh grade. And he was eating a bag of Doritos, and somebody walked up to him and said, Motherfucker, you should play football. You're huge. And he's like, Okay. And then he went and played football, but he never loved it. That's that's who Eddie Goldman, that's who he reminds me of. And yeah, he, I was, he I what does he set. have? What does he have on his deal? Could Jackal look that up? He they signed him to an extension right after, like literally the the same week that they traded for Khalil Mack in 18. I believe it was a five year deal. I mean, I can look oh. it up real quick. So he's still under contract. Yeah. Yeah. That's but why it, the but Bears will get lo- back like if they cut him, it would be they would gain about eight, eight and a half million in cap room. There's and I mean, you're gonna have to take that. You're gonna have to cause, you know, you're gonna have to find another corner, you know. That's the yep. thing. You're going to have to – who's going to be playing next to Roquan? What are you going to do with Roquan? Roquan's going into his fifth – do you want him playing all year on a one-year deal, you know, at 24 years old? Bilal Nichols, he had all the chance in the world to to make a lot of money here in Chicago. He didn't live up to the hype this I'll year. Get rid of him. him. But they get drafted – they drafted – they drafted I Tonga. love Bilal Nichols. They drafted Tonga. They gave Blackson a two-year extension. They gave, but the, it's small money. Blackson. I like and Blackson. Oh, 
Me and too. I like very that. small money. Mario Edwards has not been used ever since those penalties. He's kind of been the only one held accountable that we've seen because I have not seen much of him. Um, how we decide again, who's the GM, who is the head coach that that's the key in well, that's the thing. Phil. The you King can, Hicks thing. You can see Absolutely. a fundamental shift. You not would you bring in a new coaching staff? Yeah. They they may switch everything and say we're going we're going to go to a, a, a four three beat base and then Eddie yeah. Eddie Goldman is going to be gone. I don't think yeah. Eddie wants. I just don't think, I think Eddie you is into that it mentally. Eight point nine. I'm totally with you. I agree, and I hate I hate losing the talent, but I just mentally you can't. It's, just, it's the same thing, that. and I I don't want to go down this fucking vortex with Mitch Trubisky. But it was that I said it a hundred times on this show. I just mentally. Mitch didn't have that fucking dog mentality. And I look at Eddie Goldman as the same type of dude. He's just, he's just going with the flow of the river where it takes him, it takes him. And it's, well, he's not going to, right he's not going to bring that out of him though. If, if, if the bears, you know, bring in Todd Bowles, if they bring in a Leslie Frazier, if they could, bring in a Jim Harbaugh, yeah, it could. can a coach bring that out of him? Can a coach give him the confidence? Can a coach, you know, just but get them going. It's a great point, Mikey, because you you've been on easy street here with Matt Nagy. We see that there's no accountability. Just that the Bears aren't going to get him. I don't think Pittsburgh's obviously going to fire Mike Tomlin. But you imagine Mike Tomlin sitting down with Eddie Goldman. He would have to me. I feel like he'd have him convinced and motivated in, in 30 minutes. In the first meeting, he'll yeah. be ready to fucking go the whole season. First, and meeting. I mean, if you could come into the 2022 season with Justin Fields ready to go try to figure out your offensive line but you have Mac and Quinn Roquan Jalen Johnson another you know year and a motivated Eddie Goldman I mean you can you can wreck some teams but it's there we haven't seen well, that that's enough. the whole reason why these fucking blog boys don't get it that this football team is better than people believe you're 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 on the cusp your offense has held you back with a terrible head coach who's a terrible play caller game planner schemer executionist as well as an accountability person he doesn't terrible leader he do, he's not the leader and ryan pace hired matt Nagy. ryan pace gave mike glennon 18 million are you banking on Ryan Pace finding the answers for the next coach? I'm not. I really, I'm tired of patron 222. I, I just yeah, feel Yeah, I like mean, I don't think he's going to be in the, I mean, he, I think if he's here, he'll have input on it. But I, I think that there's too much smoke. I don't think he's going to be back in everybody, as uh, everybody's. GM. Yeah, everybody's rumor He's had his chances. Uh, sources how many chances are saying you give the guy. I'm pretty good source. Thank you. Keep producing those drops. I love it. Matt Nagy's might be a source. We should have asked him today. Is Ryan Pace going to stay here? <laughs> Maybe he would have given us a straight answer on that. I'm I'm being completely honest. I just don't understand where okay we're going to triumph middle middle round picks as a, a focal point for ryan pace I, no I that's got to be a that. part of it and this is a trap that i think fans especially fall into is they expect i mean i, I i've seen people called javon wims a bust <laughs> he was a fucking seventh, seventh round man. draft pick <laughs> right <laughs> Wasn't Seventh. a bust. He made the fucking team. Anthony Miller could yeah. be considered a, a bust. bust. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, Adam but Shaheen. Nobody, nobody bats 250 in the fucking draft. I mean, it's a literal fucking minefield. You just don't know how these guys are. You These prospects can have everything. They can be mentally focused. They can be physically perfect. You know how it is. You get a fucking pocket full of money. It changes you. Just like that. You're in a big city and you, you're from fucking Podunk. Now you're in fucking Chicago. You got a pocket full of fucking cash. A lot exactly. of guys think that, that 
They may, that's why at, you have Eddie to have Jackson, football right. people. No, no, no. Football I get it. People. Absolutely. It's you have to be it. able to. I, that's why I say I can watch all the tape. I'm going to find the talent. I'm. I'll be hitting a thousand with talent. It's that part that Shane's talking about. We, Matt, Ryan Pace has failed sitting down finding the man. Like who oh, sits down with Mitch Trubisky and Deshaun Watson and chooses Trubisky over Watson? Well, supposedly he didn't sit with Watson, but come to find out he did. Whatever the case may be, he fucked up. And, and then Mahomes, he was their second choice. Well, you got it wrong. Your well, analysis such of the quarterback a wide position. Gap between them, he felt like he needed to trade up one spot. I mean, it's if that's the case and you have Mahomes number two, I, you're like, fuck it. You want to take Mitch number two? I'll sit here and take Mahomes. Exactly. Three. Exactly. But he Shane. had such a wide gap. I mean, that's the, that shows you the end of the day. Analysis. Nothing. All you have. If you if you want to make the case to move on from Ryan Pace, it's really simple and it doesn't involve any going through his drafts and free agency blunders. Kevin because free, White was a bust. Yeah, all you have to do is go through the quarterbacks. That's it. And and the early round picks, too. Yeah, he, he, you know. he paid Chase Daniel a bunch of money. You got little to no return at Chase all. Chase Daniel. Ryan Hoyer was here. That was it. Nick Ryan Foles. Hoyer. Nick uh, Foles. My, Andy Glennon. Dalton. Yeah, Mike Andy Glennon. Dalton, all of these guys. And I understand. He's never, and he said, Shane, we're going to draft the quarterback every yeah. year. Yeah, got him. It's the most important position of football hub. I mean, you got you got to understand, guys. I I can't answer some of these questions. You got. <laughs> He's got excellent get off. He's got excellent get off. Any get off. So <laughs> he needs get off. Get off the stage and let someone else pick. This is an area. Shane, you knocked it out of the park, man. You're right. When all is said and done. If you're the GM that drafts Ken O'Brien over Dan Marino, should you keep your job? Should you keep your job? No. Oh. Mark Sanchez. <laughs> we forgot about him. I think he it. got it right this time. I do. I, that's how much I, I believe in Justin Fields. I believe in Justin Fields. But that's going to be. a performance-based league, is it not? Yeah. No, performance over politics. Well, that's the thing, too. And, and you can say, you know, about the expansion of Hallis Hall and – I believe it was maybe Olin that brought it up, and it's it's true that that's. I'm not going to give you credit for that because that's your fucking job. That's that's part Thank of the you. fucking process. That's Remember, you should be doing screaming that, that the other week. I'm let like, him handle Arlington Heights. Just get fuck? him out of the GM role. Someone yes. wrote the check I think, for him. I don't Who gives think, a fuck. He, I think there's very this. little chance. If I was, if I was seven years, if we were in Vegas right now, and I was it, I was going all in. I would mm -hmm. say that. Ryan Pace is going to be here, and he's not going to be the general manager. I agree. I so agree. he's going to take the Ted Phillips role. What is, his, be, is he going to be the president? I think him of and Ted are going to collaborate together. With their little oh, balls I, off, I, and they're going to no. I, I handle think, Arlington Heights. Yeah, exactly. My, I think that I think that that Ryan Pace and Ted Phillips, just exactly what Mike said. That that's going to be their sole focus. He's going to be there as a sounding board, and they're going to you know. They could bring in a guy like a Lake Dawson or listen, you know, very closely writers type up your stories that Shane reports. Yeah, Lake it. Dawson. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if, let me ask you this real quick. If, if, if they were playing, if George was planning on bringing pace back, why wasn't Jenkins starting against the giants? If you're Ryan oh pace, God. you don't go into Matt Nagy's office and say, listen here, motherfucker. I want our young guys playing. I got to see him on tape. I'm going to be here still. I need to know what I have moving forward. I don't think that happened. He might oh not have God. any assurance. You, you don't. I don't know how Ted works. I don't know how George works exactly, but I could see them not giving any assurances to anybody, knowing what they want to do, but not giving any assurances in, until maybe this week or you know after the. After the Minnesota game, does it make sense? Not at all. Give I me mean, some fucking names. <laughs> Give this kid two fucking games. Give me some fucking names. Exactly. You can't tell me that Tevin, Tevin Jenkins, Jenkins. Tevin Jenkins is good enough to come in and replace a guy, but he can't start the fucking game. I mean, that it makes, was the biggest. Yeah. Listen. Bullshit. 
I went ballistic on BHL. I'm going to do it again. I'm getting antsy already. I think in the history of me watching the Chicago Bears with my boy Shane, collaborating through text or back in the day, dial-up message boarding, no matter who the fuck the coach was, they never planned for the future in these Never. moments where seasons were lost. They didn't play these young players to get a perfect assessment for them, especially a coach on the fucking chopping block having the fucking cojones to do something positive for a young franchise, a young team, a young whatever player to say, you know what? I'm going to do what's best for Tevin. He needs these reps. He was all about himself. I got a Jason out there. That was the dumbest, most selfish, most ignorant fucking thing I've ever seen. It was fucking destroying me inside to know at least they started born because I really, I was going to put a lot of money on a Fetty was going to be out there with Peters. At least they had the presence of mind to put Borum out there, but to not put Jenkins out there and put him out there on special teams is a football fucking travesty. That's that's the truth. There's no if ands, or buts about it because, just like Shane said, give me fucking Nate. Tevin Jenkins against the Vikings versus his initial, let's throw him in there against Green Bay because Peters got hurt. Of course he's going to be rusty. He hasn't played all year, had back surgery, was running hills with fucking Mark Grody. What do you think he's doing? So now he's playing in the fucking game. And he's playing fucking slot receiver with this fucking moron as a head coach. And people, well, it just, oh my God. It, it even goes beyond them. I then saw, he, but what you he see did Daz Newsom. Daz Newsome didn't exactly. play a ton. But in Daz Seattle, Newsome. he had the nice punt return. He had that one third down <laughs> conversion that he actually slipped on and then got like five or six more yards to push to, to move the chains. He got zero snaps against How about the Giants. Uh, None. Graham. Thomas, Thomas Graham, got Graham got Jr. Thomas Four Graham snaps. goes out there, balls out. You didn't see a defensive performance like you saw against the Vikings all year. They didn't have Eddie fucking pussy boy Jackson and his frosted flakes. They didn't have any of these guys that were starting. They had young bucks out there who wanted to play the game of football. That's the difference. The coach has to find those. To put Thomas Graham Jr. on the sideline, you're a fucking, you're lost. Tevin Jenkins on the side. How about this? Shane gave me the greatest stat. I'm giving him credit. This is what I do, Mike. I give credit to smartness and to people's opinions. I don't need a blue fucking check mark. Shane's like, Phil, can you believe Trevis Gibson had 20 snaps? That's it. And Bruce Irvin, guess how many he got? 32 or 30. 36. Yeah. 36. He almost doubled them. 36 up. snaps. To Bruce Irvin's Bruce not going to be here next year. Right. Who's not going to be here, signed off the street. That was like, what? Travis Gibson got you two strip sacks. He's out there balling, and he's on the fucking bench. It's like Robert Quinn. It's third and fucking seven from your end Travis zone. Gibson You're going out. Been walking off the fucking field, dragging his tongue off the fucking field. You oh used him so God. much against the Giants. This coaching st- People want to sigh? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I know he's a Connecticut kid. I have no bias. I don't want to sign anywhere Politics over performance yeah. at Hallis Hall. Oh, exactly. It's all about the fucking politics. <laughs> Flip Look at that, that around, right on too. That's, yeah. exactly. that's yeah. going to be the song tonight. Speaking of which, performance over politics, the TTNL song coming up after Mike T bounces on us. We're going to. Debut a cool Kennedy TTNL original song. If you're a patron, you've already get to see the song. It's already over there on the patron side. But yeah, politics over performance is a Matt Nagy hub arkish. Name everybody. Give me names, Shane. Give me fucking name. All of them are all about politics. Yeah, it better all not be Teron Armstead. Like I said that. Yeah. You break down his snaps over the last few years, and it's so wildly inconsistent because why? He's injured all the time. So you wanna you wanna invest into that? No way. Listen, Listen. you're gonna take your fucking lumps. We've taken our that that's what the Bears take a step back. So what are we gonna do? Win five games? (laughs) Okay, cool. We have six wins right now. We're used to getting our fucking nuts stepped on. 
it's part of it but you have to fucking step back to go forward and build this shit the right way just imagine imagine had the bears not moved up for justin fields imagine if they had drafted they didn't fucking, luck into him imagine if they That's had drafted that. kellen mond in the fucking third round and and Justin Fields was in. If the Bears didn't take him, he was going to be a Minnesota Viking. Right. Lock it in. Done deal. Justin oh, yeah. Fields was. Imagine going into this fucking game. You think that if uh Kirk Cousins was out with, with COVID, you'd be facing Justin Fields this weekend in Minnesota. Imagine the logistics of that with this team. There. Yeah. The Bears are nowhere near as bad as the national media and other fan bases want you to think they are because there is talent here. They do have a ton of holes, but the thing about it is, is where the Bears need to get better, there's no fucking consistent playmakers. I love Darnell Mooney. Don't get me fucking wrong, but I need, if I'm going to consider you a big time playmaker, I need to see it at least once a fucking game twice a game <laughs> the bears lack playmakers Mooney, everywhere on offense exactly <laughs> mooney's a, a two or a three uh, or a three wide receiver at totally best. agree and, that, best. and that, that's not a bad thing no you're in the fucking right. nfl right i i right. think he's a two i really two. do you, i you, think he's definitely uh, yeah. a two he but is he's a, not a number one wide out. Not a know. number one. People not get yet. offended by that. People not get offended yet. Maybe by that. Maybe he can get there, but and that's he another is thing not that, there. that you have. He's to got take. the right attitude, though. I'll tell he you does. that. You go out and two of the guys that the Bears would have been highly involved in in free agency to bring to Chicago at wide receiver: Michael Gallup, Torres ACL, Chris Godwin, Torres ACL. ACL. That's a big deal. The Bears were gonna, the Bears were going to go after a guy like that to try to settle down the position and. Go at it again. You know, Allen Robinson's not going to be back, but. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank God. I, I I loved Allen Robinson coming out of Penn State. Oh, I, I was and ecstatic when, came, when the I'm Bears like, signed Oh, him. my God, this guy. Is I was the guy that was constant. happy as hell. when the, Phil, do you remember me calling out like that entire offseason? I was like, fucking oh, you, perfect. You n- nailed all. You can go back. And I was time. most excited about fucking Trey Burton. I'm like, this is the kid that's been on the depth chart, pushed down in Philly. Early on and football didn't didn't love it. He didn't Not love it. Paid. Listen, I want to say this point before I forget and I don't make it on here and the writers write about it later after I said it later. The willingness to not accept losing. The willingness to not accept losing is something I don't see in Ryan Pace. I don't see in the Bears. And I don't see it in any coach they've had, including Lovey Smith. There is an attitude that you walk with that you're on top of every fucking thing. You don't let your ego get in the way of your assistant coaches. There is a tone that is set and you put the right players, the ones that are wanting and loving the game of football. You don't go by the fucking stats and the fucking clock. You go by the tape. That's where you find football players because God knows you had that fucking dumbass tweet. I don't know if it's one of your tweets about Jerry Rice. I don't want to blow it, but some assholes talking about yeah. fucking Jerry Rice. Well, it's a, not fucking being able to play in the league. To, he's making fun of his four, seven, 40 time. Four, seven, 40 him. time. You're okay. Some people don't take tests well or time and track well, but they play football real well. And that's where this franchise, I'm I'm serious, has failed each and every time at the head coaching spot. Bruce Arians is in the fucking building. There's a guy that is all about, he fucking cut a guy in the middle of the game. This is an attitude that you got to have where you're zero tolerance, except you're here to play this game of football. You're lucky to be playing a game getting paid millions of dollars to be an entertainer. And I know the sacrifices that go with it. I know everything, but there's a risk and a reward. And if if you don't love the game of football and you don't go full speed, you're going to get hurt or you're going to be out of the league. That's where the Chicago bears have to make the right choice here with Ryan Pace. Isn't that guy Ryan Pace pissed off 
stands in front of the media every time he's asked to. This guy is hidden like he's playing hide and fucking seek. <laughs> Where is he? Where's Ryan? Can't find him because he doesn't want to face any kind of music. He's going to answer Jeff Joniak's written out questions that have been written by that young girl. Two more questions, guys, for Coach. Two more. Here's the questions we came up for Ryan today this week, Jeff. Ask him these. Come on. Be a real organization. Show every fucking practice. If Mike Tenerelli and Sammy the fucking bull go to fucking training camp, they can film every goddamn fucking thing they want because there's no fucking secrets in football. It's all been done. We're going to know that you're going to stop. Stop being this pussy organization. Stop. Get someone in there that's a man hiring and firing and cutting and building the pro appropriate way. We have not seen it. That's why I'm so big on Jim Harbaugh. That's why I've said that since 2014. This guy is the guy that's going to be a freaking maniac trying. And you could throw all the Michigan numbers and bullshit stats. I can, I'll throw stats at you. I'll throw Stanford stats at you. They go to a school that fucking academics go over the top of everything and you're winning. You're winning. How about those stats, you little fucks? You don't yeah. understand football. The head coach is so important. He's one guy. He's he, That's one of the guys. He's my number one guy. That would be the guy I would fucking go out all in. You want what do you want? 12 million a year? Fine. We're a billion dollar organization. You're going to make more money investing money in the coach than you ever will bringing these Tressmans and Canadian Football League people back. Come on. What are we fucking doing here? Did you see the players are reaching out now, Shane, to help out this organization? Oh, yeah. Well, they they shouldn't have to reach out. This organization should be exactly. reaching out to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's – you're not – listen, I can listen to my son. My, my son can give me advice on something. You know, Daddy, I think we should do this. I'll listen to him. Doesn't mean right. I'm going to take his fucking advice. Right. But that's the thing. All of these guys, you should – Pat Manley – Jerry Azuma, Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, Alex Brown, all of these guys, Devin Hester, all of these guys actively are involved with the Chicago Bears. And it's it's really sad. I'm like I said, you don't have to say, oh, Brian Urlacher said to hire this fucking guy. That's not what it's about. It's it doesn't about even have to be about the, the head name, coach. Right? What did you guys hate about the organization when it was here? Olin Krutz went back and talked about e the fucking the the food in the cafeteria, the the way that they fucking serve you the food, all of that yeah. shit matters. Tony Medlin, the the trainer, Chris I'm sure. Zorich was talking about how they treated him. Yeah, and it's just they made him pay. Remember Rasheed Davis? They made him pay for the game ball they gave him. Yeah, they made him pay for it. So you know how when they hand out the game <laughs> who, who ball, does Mike, that? at the you know in the locker room here, you had three touchdowns. Game ball goes to Mike. Look at the bottom of his fucking paycheck. They subtract the following the Wednesday, Jesus and it was fucking Christ. taken off. It. But that's hand it back to him. The ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if <laughs> if I'm if I to speak to your guys' point, if I'm George, okay, McCaskey, obviously he he doesn't have a high football IQ. Okay, we all know that. He's a, a, a wonderful guy, nice guy, great. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. But if 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 I'm George, I I pick three former players. Okay. Sure. Whether it be, uh, you, you know, Manley, like you said, Olin, and, you know, pick another, uh, Gary Fensick. Okay. You get three yeah. guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those three guys are advisors. Okay. You're billionaires. You pay them. You bring them in to help you out. You, you get a little round table going. You bounce ideas off of them. They vote on things with three people. You can't have a, you know, you can't have a hung jury. You have, you know, hopefully two out of the three vote one way. You talk about it, and 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 that that's the way you collaborate. Okay, exactly. You, you bring in people that that actually give a shit about this this team and about this city, and and about the Chicago Bears and know what it's about. And and that alone would have probably solved you know a bunch of problems that the, that this franchise has, has seen in the past ten years. Yeah, you break it down in simple terms. Like I said, not to bring up my kids again, but if I sit down and collaborate with my kids, and they're like. I, what do you guys want to have for dinner tonight? 
they're going to want fucking Kit Kats and fucking ice cream. You keep on doing that every single fucking day, you're going to run into a problem down the line. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it doesn't, I don't have to listen. And, and if Pat Manley comes in and says, I don't, I don't even really give a shit who Pat Manley wants as the coach. I'll listen to what he says. I want to know when you walk through the doors at Hallis Hall, what, what did you say? Like, wow, this is, this is the NFL. This, this is odd. This is, this to me, isn't up to fucking NFL standards. You know, I've, I've talked to guys around the league. What would you change? What do you think? Where do you think that we're lacking here? That, that to me is so fucking valuable. Just it's like listening to your wife. You know what I mean? She's going to, she well, knows all your fucking secrets like this, and all your flaws. I've said this with Anthony, my boy, Anthony Walker, what's up to you and your wife. Um, I've said that forever. I don't, I can't even comprehend being the grandson of the guy who started the league and not know football. Like have to go outside for, for help and resources from Ernie fucking Accorsi. My now uncle called Gunji. Ernie Accorsi, the biggest shoe salesman in the NFL. That was from my uncle, Sam Ritigliano. It's the truth. Ernie doesn't know shit. He just knows people that, that that good old boys network. That networking is one thing. Look at the Steelers. Okay, the Rooney rule, all that stuff aside. The Steelers were going to hire Grimm or uh, what's his name? Yeah, Russ Dick Grimm LeBeau. Was... Dick LeBeau. Those Russ... were going to be the replacements. Yeah, it was right? going to be Russ Grimm. 100%. And then all of a sudden, this young kid that someone said, let's make a call, check out this kid. He goes in there. It's Mike Tomlin. It's the organization's responsibility to reach out to these guys so they can say, listen, this is a Dave Tobe, for example, if Devin's speaking or Lance Briggs, Dave Tobe needs to be interviewed. This is why I don't Dave Tobe might have told Ted Phillips he's a fucking punk and Ted having a bias towards that or whatever emotional moment is the reason they're failures. Stay the fuck out of there. Bring these people in. Give you names. You sit down with them and you determine at that point who is the right person. Because let's be honest. Let's look at these coaches. And I know Shane and I have talked about this forever. Mark Tressman, did he have that fire, passion, and love for winning? No. John Fox. Did he have it? Did Lovey Smith inspire you, the fan? Forget about what he did for the defense, the Tampa 2. Did he have this end-all, be-all fire that you saw? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Does this guy, Matt Nagy? No. But we did, yes see it. we did see it with Ditka, who wasn't a yes man, who was hired by the old man. The old man understood that because he was an asshole. You got to get an asshole that's going to fight and claw on every play. We're dealing with a guy that doesn't challenge a spot. Do I do it? Do I not? Lovey fucking would fail every challenge. We've talked about the guy. These little things matter in football. And it's about, listen, some people are great coordinators. Shane has said it. How many games did Lovey win since he's left the Bears? 27. 27. You know what? One in nine years, in nine seasons coaching. Ron Rivera coaching. was calling the defense. Lovey was jealous. And I've been told this many times, but I'll share it again. Jealous of the notoriety that Ron was getting after they went to the goddamn Super Bowl. Lovey fired Ron Rivera after they went to the Super Bowl. A Super Bowl team fires their defensive coach. He's got to go to the Chargers and become a linebacker coach. <laughs> no, that should never happen. But it did in Chicago. We do this. Jay Rogers goes out of town. Every coach. What's the coach now with the ramp, the Chargers? Uh, Brandon Staley. Staley. You saw potential in him. Gone. Let's get Tressman in here over a tough guy in, who's going to speak his mind. Like when fans say, well, the McCaskies can't take it. They can't. That's it. They have to now. 
That's what the answer is. We're not here to discover what they're going to do. We're telling you what they have to do. That's the difference from this network and fucking Austin F and the fucking guessers. The blogs guessing. You don't have no fucking source. Matt. Ryan and Matt are men of character. They are both, like Ted, outstanding leaders. I've been most impressed with how well they collaborate. They collaborate really well, guys. Come on. You need to bring in what Mike said. Bring those guys in to collaborate. Have a panel. Remember Flash Dance? The fucking panel of dancing judges. We all loved American Idol. Guess who was the asshole on American Idol? Simon Cowell, right? He became, how much money does Simon have? Because he's fucking telling the truth. If the McCaskies can't handle Phil, which they can't, they should be fucking bringing me in because that's the answer to their fucking daunting, miserable mediocrity and stupidity. At every la You become a laughing stock where bloggers and fucking Jason Lock and Forest Crooked Eye ranks you the 10th best head coaching place or whatever the fuck. Come on. You got Chicago's Quinn, number one. Quinn yeah. Mack, and a Fables. middle linebacker and a young quarterback. That alone and a dynamic running back. Who the coach here now can't think. He rushes for seven yards this past week, right? That was unblocked. He just trucked people. Coach takes them out. I'm idiot. Hell of a run, David. Let's bring you out now. I know you need to rest. No. I've, 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 I've never seen a head coach that doesn't understand momentum oh, and, 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 and what goes along with that in any sport, let alone football to just pull guys like that, especially Montgomery, after oh, a good run. Gosh. I guarantee you it's not Monty holding his hand up saying, please, come right? on, come on, get me no. out of here. Fuck bullshit. He wants to – the only time he's coming off the field is if he's gasping for air, okay? Right. And he's the only reason why he'd be gasping for air is because you keep, keep feeding him the rock and oh he's getting gosh. fucking six, seven yards a carry for five carries in a row. Nagy always thinks that he's going to outsmart everybody – instead of out execute everybody. Okay. There's a big difference there. Okay. You could say, I'm going to fucking run the ball off tackle five fucking times. We're going to do it better than you. We're going to out execute you and stop us. Yeah. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. How about a head coach Nagy who we had a, there was a guest a while back. Uh, I think it was Grody maybe, or somebody that you had on that, you know, was a part of the bears practices. And, and he said he never saw Matt Nagy have the offense run the play again in practice. That alone tells you what you need to know. How the fuck? Exactly. When I, I asked when him I was that, playing, I was we like, used to run ever say... five, six times in a row to, to get it right. It's not a script. It's not just, okay, next play, guys. Come on, let's go. You run the – perfect the fucking play, then move on to the next play in practice. I can't tell you how many times a coach would be in my ear, run it again, run it again. Until we get this right, we're running it again. I Never just happened wanna, once with Coach Nagy. I Nag. want to address Bob here because I've seen this many times. Okay, Tom Landry was a tyrant in the locker room. He handled his composure on the sideline and was maniacally a head coach in 1970 and the early 80s. Today's football player, they want to tune in. They want to tune into their fucking Instagram. They want to tune into this. They also were on this show saying they want discipline. They want to be held accountable. On this network, more than one, Ryan Nall just happened to be the most boisterous about it. So before we try to rewrite football in the Chicago Bears, let's look at I just broke down all of Dick Jerron. Did he inspire you? Did he? He always reminded me of the fucking bad guy on Scooby Doo. Damn you, kids. There's that got dude. to, exactly. You can't be a specialist in one side of the football. You got to be a head coach. As a defensive coach, you should know fucking offense inside and out because you're trying to stop it. What do you fuck? This isn't soccer. This is not soccer. This is 
so much teaching, so much of what Mike was just talking about. Get the fuck back and run that play against an odd front. What is the center doing? What do you do on the odd front? You're teaching all the time. You're exhausted after every game. There's one game in Matt Nagy's four years that he was exhausted. It was two weeks ago against the Vikings. Two. Yeah, I kind of lost my book. You've never seen him more involved. That's what it's got to be every time the coach goes out there. And I'm sorry. I used to think that ain't going to be maybe a Bill Walsh kind of guy could come in here to Chicago. There is something to this city, to this whatever, you know, puzzle that this organization needs someone to be the opposite of them. Because if you're all yes men, because that's what you got up top. You follow it? So Tom Landry would suck here. He would suck, right? Because if he became a yes man, okay, don't worry. Let's trade Khalil Mack. <laughs> that shit doesn't work here. Okay, let's take David out. Let's give Tariq Cohen an extension. I really love that. Let's devise some more plays where we can do the T formation, that we could do Mama's Sleigh Ride, Willy Wonka, the Chocolate Factory. All Let's get all these gimmicks out there. Let's do that. This ain't going to happen here. It's Olin's not on really a, rocket science. Olin's currently on a mission on Twitter right now. Is he coming on? Praising, praising the extension Leno. for Charles Leno and <laughs> taking his taking his shots. How can Charles you be high Leno. on some? How can you be high on someone with two starts who left his second start with a shoulder injury? I am interested in seeing him develop. Yes, he somebody, can't be high on him. Somebody. Shot back at him, yet you are high on Sam Mustafers, who is the worst starting center in the NFL. And or Olin says, <laughs> according to who? <laughs> no, you never I, said the worst. I I'll love back you up on that. I, I've never said Sam is the worst but, center. Phil, you, you bring up an interesting name. You and I talked about this, Cars and I, and, and Ryan Cox did a little bit too. Uh, you can't go into these interviews with any preconceived notions of this is going to be my guy. You know what exactly. I mean? You have to be open and honest with yourself to be blown away by somebody like, holy shit. I, I didn't expect this fucking guy blew me out of the water. There's, you know, Phil, we, we talked about it. We brought up the name privately, but there's a guy out there that I could see maybe teams potentially. And nobody's, nobody's brought his name up connected to Chicago, but it's a name that I could see is the defensive coordinator in San Francisco, D'Amico Ryans. Mm -hmm. Is he the next Mike Tomlin, you know, right. middle linebacker. He's obviously a guy, you know, fierce competitor going to command respect in this. I just don't want bears fans to fall into the trap that, Oh, it's gotta be an offensive guy because of Justin Fields. Yes, I get it. No, it's gotta be the right fucking guy. For the Chicago Bears, he's got to be a fucking leader. It's got to be about accountability. It's it, it's got to be all of that. Justin Fields is the most important piece. I get it, but you're not doing him any fucking favors. Matt Nagy was supposed to be the offensive guru. It didn't fucking work out because he had so many other warts. Nice guy was the, no accountability, none with him. It's got to be the right fucking guy. You have to give yourself the ability to let D'Amico Ryans come in and talk to him and let him blow you away and be like, holy shit, this guy's only 36 years old, but God damn, he's going someplace. Exactly. Somebody's going to hire this kid, you know? Exactly. Actually, yeah. Add the Chicago mentality. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not huge on, on hiring a coordinator. I'm more of down the head, the head, hire a head coach, someone that's been a head coach. But if I had to lean one way in Chicago, I would definitely look at some defensive coordinators because that's the mindset of this. That was the mindset of this team when they had success. Even you look at the, you know, the, the Olin days and things like that. They had horrible quarterbacks. They had a great defense that, that got them to the Super Bowl, and they had a great, you know, they had Devin Hester, of course. But, you know, if, like I said, I, I would, I would definitely interview some defensive minded guys for this team and for this market. 
I would totally stay away from the Brian Dables, the, Ugh. you know, Ugh, not the, interested the, at all. The, the, the Kellen Moore's uh, get, get, get him out of here. I wouldn't even interview him to be honest with you. I would spend all my time. If I'm George McCaskey, just fucking grow a pair, man. You're, you are the fucking grandson of the creator of the NFL. Pick up the phone. Everybody's going to take your call. Okay. Anybody that is worth anything in football is going to take your call. Call Mike Tomlin. Okay. Call Sean Payton. Call, those two guys could be not only your head coach, but they, but they could be your football ops guy. They can handle the whole thing, you know, and, 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 and just right. start from scratch and, and, and have a little confidence in yourself, George. I know one I, guy and, we got to call. Nerd alert. There he is. Where is he? There he is. Look at this oh, guy. There he is. He's back. Sheree <laughs> made me change it. That's right. That's a proper proper screen name if I've ever heard one. But Carter's, we were we were talking with Mike about you know not saying that a hundred percent. I think a lot of people are falling into the trap. You know, you brought up the name D'Amico Ryan's when we were text, texting the other day with Ryan Cox. You have to leave yourself that ability to be blown away by a guy like that. You I mean, know, how else do you find a Tomlin or a Bella check? Right. Or, exactly. you know, the, forgive me, the guy in Buffalo, who I think is doing a tremendous job, too. Right. Yeah. You yeah. can't you can't Experiment. just limit yourself and take away half of your options. Yeah, I, it's got to be a guy that can be a leader of men that stands with integrity. I believe the fire has to be in there because I've seen too many that don't. And I believe it's a. A byproduct of what's above them. To be perfectly clear, I think the yes men mentality that they're going to get along, that no one's going to make waves and say something that we're going to have to worry, that doesn't work with Chicago. What the so fuck is Tony talk? Tony, what are you doing? Clean your fucking ears out. Dude. Nobody, that's exactly what we don't fucking want, dude. Yeah, exactly. We don't Stop want with the that. nonsense, bro. We're just football, re football has not evolved from whistle to whistle. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. From whistle to whistle, football has not. I understand it's an offensive minded league and you can't touch the quarterback, blah, blah, blah. But whistle to whistle, offensive line and defensive line in the trenches, football really hasn't changed that much. Because to your everything. point, where are all the offensive, the really good offensive line coaches are like 60, 70 plus, right? Like that grew up in that era. And that's still. You know, Philadelphia's Super Bowl was because they had one of the most dominant offensive and defensive lines mm -hmm. in the league when they did it. And that's how you win consistently. And a real head coach understands, as I've said before, that offensive line coach is the most important hire you're going to have. Yeah. It is always going to be that. So if you're a defensive guy or an offensive guy, the offensive line coach that brings that personality, that temperament, there are teams that win in this league because they know how to run the football better than you do. And that's the bottom line. You you can throw out every passing record and number you want at me, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to protect and you're going to have to run. And it goes back to blocking and tackling. That being said, listen, I got to do this promo, Shane. Not promo, but this read here. Vet US. Vet US. Life is back, guys. Sports betting. I know cars had a big weekend. Bet US has your NBA, NHL, NBA, UFC, PGA, NFL, college, the national championships coming up. We have a special deal here as Bet US sponsors us. Betting lines are up for their 27th year and live betting on all of this stuff. Log into betus.com or you can even call a number. 1-800-792-3887. That's 1-800-79-BET-US. BET-US, you will get 125% bonus to what you want to gamble. That's 125% more when you put in the code SHYCITY125. That's SHYCITY125. Customer service pros are ready to get your phone, social, online sports betting kickoff. Start now. Play with a proven mainstay in the industry. Bet US. You bet, you win, you get paid. It's betus.com. Official sponsor here of the Tape Never Lies. 
Network, BetUS.com. I had to get that promo in there, Coach Nagy, soon to be end of the year, Coach, before. Uh, Mike, you, you good to stay for a little or you got to yeah, bounce? I'm, I'm good. Okay, so Mike, car, cars, real quick. Before we, real quick, real quick. Well done. Is that Claudio producing? Look at him. This back. guy's doing good. <laughs> you move Jackal. Shit starts to get done. Shit starts to get done. Before we debut the world premiere of Performance Over Politics, our new song here at the network, Ryan Pace, just to you, Cars. What is your percentage? Is he stay or is he gone? Not what uh, you want, what you think is going to happen. Yeah, what you think I, happen. I think he's staying. I I don't get the – it's the most bearish thing ever. He's endeared himself to Virginia and the family. I use this all the time. Part of the reason we couldn't church. fire Dick – yeah, Dick Duran went to church with Virginia, and they couldn't fire him, right? Like, in some capacity, he's staying. It wouldn't shock me if he's the Ted Phillips replacement. You know, we've we've heard right. a lot of reports of – like Ted's here for one more year, and that could be the passing of the baton that way. But yeah, I don't. I, I sadly, and it really kills me to say it. I think he's staying. Wow, you heard it here. Now everybody is in unison on all of the updates with Ryan Pay. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle Monday. Obviously Sunday, oh, maybe well, Sunday night. The, the the number one thing that has to happen on Monday mm-hmm. is when they. Fu- Ted Phillips cannot be oh my sitting God. up We've there. said he this every be. year, Shane. He can't be. He cannot Shane. be. She agrees with the decisions w- that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. I I don't even want George up there because I don't want to I don't want someone that's going to read a, a statement. I don't want someone that has to type out everything. Yeah, why can't And it's just like speak? you're the kid in speech class, right? That's got to be like Do you think they'll speak on Monday or do you think they'll push it out to like Tuesday? Oh, no, they won't. They'll push it out as far as as long as they can. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll make an announcement or release a press maybe Sunday night. Well, yeah, we I had the whole fucking timeline broke down on BHL. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I, I we had that right? clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm a pretty good source. Well, you're better than Austin, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> let me just say this. Here at the network, if you aren't a patron and you want deep analysis of the Chicago Bears, the offseason, the draft, the free agency, and using the tape, not stats, we discovered Angelo Blackson and why he would benefit this football team. We talked about Tevin Jenkins, Justin Fields, Larry Borum. All of these players that ended up becoming drafted. We were breaking them down with the tape. Become a patron. It's the tapeneverlies.com. We also do everything original. People want to copy us, Mike. Here we do music, as you can see. The Keep It at 100 open song. Mr. Tom Boson's favorite song, uh, Keeping It 100, gets the show started every week. Here it is. Cherie is our number one music constructive criticism giver. She's in the back there producing tonight. Uh, Cool Kennedy and myself took our statement. My rant brought out this performance over politics. That's what the new head coach has to walk into Hallis Hall and say, I don't care if we get the guy as an undrafted. I don't give a fuck if he is paid millions. We are going to play the best. Not any other way are we going to play this game of football. It's all about winning. And I don't care if he has the calmest disposition or the most maniacal disposition. That's got to be the first and foremost check mark in the interview. Right there. You can get your swag on with that. Performance over politics. Cool Kennedy and myself. Here it is. The world premiere. P.O.P. It's performance over politics. Performance over politics. 
Performance over politics. P.O.P. Performance over politics. D.D.P. said fuck a cap and arena tricks. We trying to build a dynasty out of heap of shit. McCaskey money rolling in, but that don't mean shit to diehard fans. No matter where they move the stadium in Chicago land, you can't escape the aftermath. You can't win no stats and blog boy math. The battle starts in the trenches. You can't fix Nagy's offense with 35 wrenches. Up in the nosebleeds, you smell the play call stenches. The sledge feels drop jewels like Osco. Tell the genius sell the team wholesale. Costco. You can have a ton of stats, but still be winless. Nagy still in this mill house. Influence McDonald's is hiring. McCaskey's grimace. Zero accountability. The wise cause regression. Performance is the plaza. The Bears stay at the West End. Guess it. Competition bringing out the best thing. Anything you do but pace Bears being obsession. Wrong personnel. This team never play the best. Performance over politics. The bear opposite. Virginia still smiling. Millhouse praising Culture. George talking leaders, man. reading script oh, on his own stuff. Where the fuck is pace? Hiding behind the wire. <laughs> P.O.P. It's over politics. Performance over politics. Performance over politics. Hiding behind the wire. There it is, performance over politics, Mikey. That's Loving gonna be it. a banger. That's a banger to the original cars. You like it? Cherie is. It was very. I like the beat. It was very good. Cool, Kennedy. That producing. beat is sick. man. That beat go hard. There it. Is. Imagine, Imagine with, with some the bass, with kickers in the popping. back of that trunk. <laughs> I've already played it in my fucking Sonata that doesn't even have a kicker, and it was kicking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad we're asking me for how I feel about hip hop songs because everybody looks at the guy who you can barely see the wall hey. behind because I'm so white, and it works out perfectly. Listen, everybody can like hip hop cars. Don't get prejudicial, right, Cherie? Yes. Thank you. Maddie says it's best song yet. I agree. Listen, I think Cool Kennedy, you know how much I love him. I'm not blowing smoke. The guy just, I go, listen, the true story. I got so fucking pissed off after a BHL. I'm like, what are we doing? We got to do a performance over politics song. This dude went to work in 48 hours, sent me his verse. His track. I, go, I haven't even written anything and hear it. He's like, I already got my verse, got the thing. And then I was just freestyling that. Where the fuck is Pace hiding behind the whys? <laughs> I just threw that in there. And I was like, we got to keep that in there. <laughs> it's so fun. Listen, I work well with him. I love this dude. He's the man. And I'm so proud. Any, They can copy all the other stuff, right? They can't copy the original music and everything we do here at this network from Shane's tweets. Oh, yeah, we're working that ass tonight. Rapping, making stuff for TTNL, original music. That obviously is from our guy, Mark Rebele. Mark Rebele, who Fucking hilarious. we have nothing but respect for that dude. We trying to get him on the show to do that song live would be amazing. But yes, cool Kennedy. I see him in the chat. Shout out to you. Salute to you for everything you do. We got original st- songs, and we are going to put them all on Spotify and our patron. Going to open up the LP from Leno is gone. Blog boys. We have so, how many songs uh, do we have, Shane? So many songs. I'm trying to think. You know how I feel about stats. Or the stats are for losers. Oh, this is Claudio the Barber. Yo, this is Claudio the The Yo, this is Claudio song needs to come out at some point. 
But yeah, blog boys, shout outs, bold predictions. There's so many bear up, bear down, all of this stuff that we try to bring here to have a great Wednesday night and all our BHL, all our shows have song opens. X's with the O's on Saturday. All of it. Loving it here. Shane Manscaped. Manscaped. Yeah, better. We better do that. Cheers to 2022 and resolutions. You can actually keep. How about having a clean and shiny balls, Mike? All year round. Our sponsors at Manscaped are here to save your balls this year and make the ball drop. Well, it already dropped. Cars is living it. 2022, he's the cleanest and sexiest ever. Set your lords and your mans up for New Year's resolutions with good intentions. Joins the 4 million lords and men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With our exclusive offer, go to manscaped.com and insert the code Shy City Sports, right? What's the code, Jane? It's not in there. I'm looking for it. Oh, Whoops. There's no code in there. Is it keeping it I 100 think, or Shy think, City? Yeah, it's KI 100. Are you sure? Um, no, it's Shy City Sports. Told Shy you. City Sports. <laughs> Shy City Sports. Where's Steven Johnson? Damn it. He pressed. pressed He's ending the, the show. Shy Look at City that. There Sports. it is. You See? got it? Yeah, Shy look. City Sports. I I can't see it. There it is. Shy. So City what Sports. we're gonna do though? Yes. For our keeping it one hundred crew here. Yes. Head over to Manscape.com. Use yep. your code. Get twenty percent off free shipping. And if we get ten sold, ten during this show, mm-hmm. Phil and I are going to pick one of the ten. You have to share your slip that showing slip. us that you bought your receipt screenshot it send it to at ttnl network on twitter you can dm it to us if you want to and phil and i are going to purchase a tevin jenkins jersey yes and you will yes. get that number 76 tevin jenkins give me some fucking names <laughs> give this kid two fucking games give me some fucking names Give me some fucking names. Oh, we need, baby. We need yes. 10 <laughs> Manscaped orders during this show using the code Shy City Sports. You get 20% off. And it, it is no bullshit. They send it to Phil and I. It is great shit. Even their shampoo Listen, and all that uh, stuff is awesome. My wife loves the body wash. I get compliments on it. I don't know if she's Phil's compl- wife complimented me on my body wash too. It was weird, <laughs> but you know, he's my boy. <laughs> what? We know your own wife isn't, so at least at least yeah. some lady yeah, you in your life. Shy, <laughs> Shy City Sports is the code, as Shane is saying. Complete that set, Manscaped. They're gonna throw in a travel bag. They're gonna give you boxers and free gifts and goodies and new products. There's no need. No introduction. The ultra premium body wash, as I was talking about, from Manscaped. Solve all three for perfect addition to your daily grooming routine. But in the shower, shower every day. I hope you do. The body wash smells great. It's cologne infused, and they also have a shampoo. They're going to give you both of them. Kids, kick discomfort and poor hygiene to the curb. You get to shave your balls, and you can use the body wash. For exclusive offer, 20% off, and the possibility to win a Tevin Jenkins jersey here, insert this code, Shy City Sports. Cheers to new balls in 2022. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Thank you, Cherie. Shaving balls is a very good thing. (laughs) <laughs> Where's oh, oh, this is Claudio the Barber. Yo, 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 this is Claudio the Barber. Oh, this is Claudio the Barber. This is Claudio the Barber, and this is Shy City Sports keeping it 100. Listen, it's Jesper Horsehead's world, and we're just all living in it. Michael the fucking killer right here. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Never mind. Take him off. I can't even understand him because of the mask. It's done. Take it off. There he is, Claudio, oh, the barber shaving balls. Oh, never gave above Michael the, waist. the killer a chance. You didn't give him a chance. Cut him Everything off above quick. the waist, right, Claudio? That's it. I only. Sh that's it. How is that on above the popping up there? There we go. <laughs> there the we balls. Go. There Got we it. Go. There it is. There it is. Claudio, the barber's with us tonight as well. Listen. We X is with the O's. What was that? An oldie but goodie. Smoke weed every day. There he is. I got out of Audio. Mikey's car right there. I remember that day. <laughs> <laughs> He's Bro. like, Mikey's like, yo. Can you hear me? This is your dad speaking. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm in space. I'm in space. <laughs> He was wondering what Maggie was calling. The best part about that day, we were live for about 45 minutes. Your dad says to me all of a sudden, when we go live, when can they start here? Like, <laughs> We've been live for almost an hour, Coach. <laughs> well, we're live tonight. We talked about a bunch of coaching and maniacal and Maggie gone, Pace gone. We're going to continue that conversation Shane, there's no tweets tonight. No right? tweets tonight. Yeah. No they're tweets. All, they're tonight. all bad. We're, we're all gonna bad. we're gonna compile a nice list after the firing for next week's show because there's gonna be a lot of idiots out there. Well, Being there's like, already Bears a made lot. A, Bears made a mistake. A lot of these hardball takes just make me laugh. Like, have you lived, Matt Nagy? <laughs> Gee, hardball is like moving. It's like George Jefferson moving on up to the penthouse. You've been in the outhouse. Come on. Oh. So if Jesus. we go around the panel here. Yes. Phil. Yes. Ryan Pace. He's here in some capacity. What they're going to do or what I would do? No, That's what they're the going to do. Oh, they're going to keep this fucking clown boy. He's the, he's the uh, what is the name of that? Lake Forest parted hair. He's working Sheree. out. Yeah, yeah, Thank they're you. keeping them. They're gonna promote them to something. Claude, yeah, no, definitely. Can only imagine the smells coming out of that thing, but you know, <laughs> Mike <laughs> Crackle says yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna say no. Uh, it, it, oh. football. And uh, if he is, I, I pose this question to all you. Uh, l let's say, let's say jim harbaugh comes for an interview because he loves and respects the bears so much and he was a player and you know we all know the history and let's say that ryan pace is the one interviewing you when you're jim harbaugh and you want to control what you want to control and you don't want pace in your way does that screw everything up does that does that some of those or a sean payton does he, does he come in and say hey man, i think if you're that's calling the... shots i'm i'm gone i'm not forget you guys i can do something else Ryan you Pace know? and Sean Payton are very close. Right. So I think that that's the – that still to me could be the ultimate why. I'm scared of the compensation, how that's going to unfold. But to me, that that is the big fucking swing for the Bears. And it – Albert Breer has put that out there. Like It's like he's intentionally went out of his way like four right. or five times to say – you know, is this the move? You know, is this Ryan Pace selling to ownership? I can bring you Sean Payton to work. And with if he does, I would, I would keep him in some way because that would be – he's my number one. He's the, the top coach on my list, honestly. He's above yeah. Harbaugh for me. I think your dad said that too, correct, Phil? Yeah. I think your dad says, put Payton in number one. Well, he – yeah, he has Payton number one. I think one A one B. I know cars hates that. Oh, my dad, where do you think I learned it? From? Getting getting ready for draft season or in the cars. <laughs> Sorry, I was one. We're on a long road there. Uh, no, that is uh... <laughs> that was me. <laughs> cars pace stays. You already said. You yeah, I think I think he stays. 
I do think though uh, it would impact Harbaugh because I think I think Harbaugh is going to want to have more control over everything. Um, but I don't think it impacts to your point. I don't think it impacts Peyton because I think Peyton would like to work with him. So yeah, I think I think if Pay stays, it's a it's a problem for some of these guys. Not quite to the the bulk level of Jacksonville, but it's it's an issue. Do you think that there's validity to the pace Peyton combo in Chicago? I think there's some I think I'm more intrigued by the and intrigue's not the right word, but the Jeff Ireland comments and how Peyton has been very public about Jeff uh, and working with him. So if if it's in a reshuffle right and pace move somewhere and Ireland comes in, that would probably be in my opinion, the more likely that it's not just a, a pace thing, but it's kind of like a mini New Orleans uh, reunion. Bringing the band back together. It's going to be yeah. Naperville reunion cars. Yeah, I know I'm going to be throwing down uh, down at Empire when that happens, and we'll just... Uh... I live in Naperville too, my man. And isn't Peyton from Naperville? Yes, he is, yeah. Fuck. What a wow. dream. We yeah, can I'll dream, right? Back. I That's mean, if the world about. can revolve around Naperville for about 25 minutes, it will not go to my head whatsoever. I can promise <laughs> I you agree. that. We Where's Tony that. Romo from? Where's he from in Illinois? I don't know uh, if he's from Illinois. He went to Eastern. Illinois, yeah. Oh, I is thought he, he from was Illinois? So did Sean Payton and Ryan Pace. All they all went to college there. Eastern. Crazy. Yeah, they all so does that mean that we go get a – what's the quarterback at San Francisco then and just really complete everything oh, all together? Um, <laughs> Jimmy Alex G. Smith. Yeah, Jimmy, oh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo. Alex Listen, Smith. Yeah, Heights, yeah. I'm sorry. I was having I was my point with uh Jim Harbaugh. 44 <laughs> 19. People always forget what he did at San Francisco the in the Bowl. NFL. He went to three straight NFC championships, 4 0 against the Packers, 44 <clears> 19. <throat> And he turned around Alex Smith's career. Remember, everyone said he was a bust. Jim went in there, worked with Alex Smith. Alex Smith isn't even in the league if it wasn't for Harbaugh. These are the things I'm talking about with Jim. This guy's out there. You have an opportunity. If I was to choose Sean Payton and giving up draft capital or and getting rid of Ryan Pace uh, with, or excuse me, and keeping Pace, or getting Jim Harbaugh, let Jim decide who the GM is and help this franchise. To me, Harbaugh yeah. over Peyton. This is a opinion. good question right here from Eric. And the way that I understand it, and it's crazy that it's set up this way, if it's an but internal no. promotion, you do not get the, the yeah, compensation. Of this the is picks. the dumbest thing. got to be from the outside. So, like, I brought up the name Lake Dawson. He's already interviewed with the Bears before for a spot back when they interviewed Ryan Pace. So if you if you brought in Lake Dawson, who's in Buffalo as the uh, DPP, I believe, that would be, a, you know, he would be getting upgraded to general manager, and along with him would come two third-round picks. If you promoted Champ Kelly, you're just promoting him. You're not getting the – but to me – Where I do you know. send the promo – Gavin wants to know. Gavin Hugo. They send it to Twitter or anywhere. Yeah, send it to send it to me on at Shane banner. Marsaw. Send it to me at Shane Marsaw. Just DM me on on Twitter. Hey, Always goes down in the DM. Marsaw. Yeah. If you have Twitter, if you don't, you could send it to the TTNL. Right. We need ten uh, of them though. You gotta have ten. Gotta get ten. Anyway, are we doing bear up, bear down, Shane? You guys Cherie, ready for it's that? Cherie's call. Cherie, you're producing tonight. Bear up, bear down. <laughs> yes. Bear up, bear down. Phil Atosian, Shane Marshall, the Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around a bear up, bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around a bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around a bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around a bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around a bear up, a bear down. It's Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around a bear
Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man around a bear oh. This week, Draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw, the smartest man Bear Ups and Bear Downs of the week. Bear up, bear down. If you're a new listener, you're listening on the podcast, you can't see us. And probably the most handsome man on TTNL, as Claudio calls him, Mikey T. No. Shane <laughs> told me to say that. I, I, keeping it 100. <laughs> keeping it 100. Yeah, it was. I texted him. Don't forget the phrase, Claudio Mike. selling you out, Shane. Don't forget the self No snitches get stitches, Claudio. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike doesn't miss a beat. Mike heard that little. I'm pretty thing. sure, pre-show, Phil. Did we not hear the words from Claudio? I'm going to take a couple of digs at Mike. Yes, we <laughs> did. My paisano. What the fuck? <laughs> Keep on, I didn't think you could be in the background and hear it, so I didn't think you'd even fucking get to you until like tomorrow. So I was like, fuck it. <laughs> no, I love you, Mike. I love you, bro. I love you, too, late. too late. Too Why? late, Claudio. Way Every too late. Week. Bear up is the positive guy in the game, or could be anything. The coach official whatever bear down is the negative it's the opposite of the you know bears fight song that they play after every point do you guys like the fight song or do you want to get rid of the fight song go around real quick on Wait, that for for what the bears after every score they play claudio has it as his ringtone no one hears it more than him yeah, I, I don't, don't mind, mind it. it. I keep don't mind. it. Yeah, I'm keep okay it. with it. Keep I love it, it, Claudio. I love it. Keep it, of course. So they, how long they have they been are, doing it for? They've only know? got to play it 26 times this year. <laughs> how long? But how long have they been doing that? <laughs> Since I can remember. It. Wait, don't they play it at the field goals too? Oh yeah, any, any score, any score, any score. <laughs> they got to the take advantage is. of it. They never get to play it. I mean, <laughs> we, we, nobody Marcus. scores less than the Bears, so we've got to make sure that we uh, we. Well, it's really the only thing point. the the fans have that they do together is is that song, right? I mean, there's really no chant. Yep. There's no, you know, there's they they even play it after Allen Robinson makes a block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. we haven't heard it yet this season. That's I funny. can't hear <laughs> that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Robinson will be moving on. On this game, we're moving on. I just wanted to go around real quick, and you in the chat could throw it in. You want it? You like the fight song? Do you not? Do you want it dressed up? Does Cool Kennedy need to remix it? Whatever. Ken's Bring it into the it. chat. It's it's interesting. Cherie, you're bared down this week. I'm going to take the layup. Uh, my bear down is definitely Allen Robinson. He's just... <laughs> she's keeping it a hundred she's keeping it a hundred yeah he he's got i'm just i'm one more game he's gone and because he's he's been useless this whole season so yeah i totally agree i've never had the trajectory of player affection that i've had with him and that's even with Eddie Jackson, Allen Robinson. I was like, this fucking guy gets it. Professional. It's not arrogant. Not this boy. Did I figure out how selfish he was, which is a worse trait than arrogance, especially in the sport of football. It's a team game, Allen. Team game. Cherie, you're 100% right. Claudio, you're bared down. I'm going to go with Andy Dalton. And this dude just yes, I know, Claudio. You know, he, he didn't Why is come he through. starting over Foles, was, dude? If yeah, Foles. I mean, obviously Justin Fields, was hurt. Yeah, I mean you Fields is in Justin. there. He's making. I mean these runs. Uh, there's so many runs he could have took, and it's just this dude just did not. You know, it was it was a layup game for him to have a great game, and he couldn't do it. So uh, he'll probably be gone. So I guess uh, it's the last we'll see of him. But uh, he's Andy Dalton's my bear down. Good call. Good call. Andy Dalton. I thought, Mike, did you agree? And and cars, because I know what Shane felt that Nick Foles, if Justin was hurt, supposedly, he was doing club dub fine. But if he was hurt, shouldn't Foles have been the coaching strategy because he's with this football team moving forward? And Andy Dalton, we bid you adieu. 
hundred percent. I mean, you said strategy. Why are you using <laughs> that as a word? We have two fucking games left, and Jason Peter starts over Tevin Jenkins because yeah. he's a Hall of Fame player. Like strategy. If you ever, I'm going to age myself. If you remember the old SNLs where they had George Bush debating against uh, Al Gore, right? And there's one word, and it was strategery. Like, that is how stupid these people are, and I can't handle it. But no, I'm not shocked. There's no strategy. It's just like, ah, that. There we go. That's what we're doing. So well said, man. And I got some fire out of you. Mr. Tenorelli, your bear down. Perfect layup to my bear down. It's easy for me, Ryan Pace. You're still the GM. You're still allowing Matt Nagy to put fucking – not start Jenkins, start Dalton, this and that. If you if you had any pride whatsoever, you go into Nagy's office Saturday, you tell him, look, this is who's starting this game. We got nothing to play for. I want to see these guys. And it just seems like that they've all just given up. And and, and, and Ryan Pace, you, you got to go all, all the way up to the top, at least with, yeah. with who chooses who plays or who should be choosing who's playing. So Ryan Pace is my bear down. I think yeah, and Mike Glennon on time. the other side. That pays paid all that money, oh, yeah. looking like a fucking <laughs> fool. So I'm a pretty to, good to source. Your pace, uh... <laughs> He's a pretty good source, and yes, I like it, Mike. The first time I think I'm bear up, bear down. Ryan Pace has gotten a bear down, Mister Cars. So uh, as I was poolside in Florida, I did not really watch the game. Lord uh, cars. You were? Where's the tan, bro? Were you yeah. in shape? Yeah. Uh, like what, do you, what do you think? Do you, I lather up an SPF 930 <laughs> to make sure that I'm okay. Um, oh, bring that fat out. Your wife was feeling that tan. Oh, right no, she was the, no. Um, but to go along uh, to go along with that, mine mine is Matt Nagy because the last half of the season should have all been about the development of the young guys: Thomas Graham, Tevin, Borum. You know, two weeks ago, Borum should have been starting, and he started a Fetty because it was the Seahawks. Like you know. Fucking- the biggest, the biggest issue with this franchise right now is, as much as I have hope, we don't know what Justin Fields is, and that's on Matt. We don't know if, if Borum and Jenkins are the guys. We don't know, and it's all because this jackass has no idea what to do. So Matt Nagy is my bear down. There's hope, guys. There's, there's hope. I hope if there's hope. Got the right- I hope there's hope. That's exactly the hidden DDP nugget in there that's what cars is talking about and that's what unfortunately a hundred percent stole my bear down just now perfect my i can leave it was good seeing everybody today uh my work here is done (laughs) my oh god my bear down Hmm. now i gotta switch this up because i had matt Nagy. whoever i'm gonna cheat the system here whoever so there's a little matt Nagy influence in my bear down because it got me so fired up guys whoever decided to call wildcat at the end of the game and try to rub it in the giants faces was the most embarrassing agitated moment of the season for me i'm like what the fuck are you doing like take a knee call the game over run a power play challenge them to stop you but in typical this culture that's the envy of the league, whether it was Bill Lazor, Matt Nagy, or whoever, that moment for me is the definition of why this fucking guy should be fucking fired so long ago, why this whole organization and why there might be hope, to Cars' point, that Justin Fields is having to deal with this kind of stupidity on every level. You had that one in the fucking playbook? Please. Get rid of the whole fucking playbook. That your playbook is my bear down. How about that? <laughs> there you go. The Mad Nagy playbook. Bear down. Thank you and good riddance. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Greek diner menu. Bye, Waffle House. Whatever the fuck. Goodbye. Shane. You're-
your bear down. Yeah, I mentioned the guy earlier. I think you saw your last game in Chicago for Eddie Goldman. I think he got 15 snaps, 27 years old. You know, should be a key cog in this defense. I just mentally, I think he's tapped out. I he got the game. Yeah, he just doesn't care. Cars is 100% correct. I mean, for him to get 15 snaps against the Giants, that should be a fucking team that you are molly whopping every fucking time oh you're lining up. And you saw the Bears make the shift. Tonga's get, I mean, fuck, they put, you could, I don't want to steal anybody's guy for bear up, but you could fucking give Kyrus Tonga bear up just on his block on Montgomery's <laughs> touchdown. He did better I mean, than two guys. JP yeah. Holtz or Mike Burton ever did. So right. That's for sure. But that's Eddie, for sure. I just believed in Eddie Goldman, the player, so much. I mean, when I scouted him, loved the guy. Phil knows. Phil was right there when they fucking drafted him. I was so fucking happy. Wasn't a huge fan of the uh, Kevin White pick, but I was. It made up. It made it up for me when they drafted Eddie Goldman, and he's. That's a ton of talent to I waste. Remember man. Shane saying, "Phil." They're going to the three four. This is the perfect nose guy. Yeah, I wanted Edwards or Goldman. And yeah. Now we have both of them. Right. <laughs> and so, Edwards yeah. had seven snaps or something ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's sad, but I think you saw his last, you know, hurrah in Soldier Field. And for that, I mean, you're going out. You're going out the wrong way, man. Twenty seven years old. You're you pissing it all away. And that that shit doesn't sell in the NFL. Somebody's going to take another chance on Eddie Goldman. I'm sure he's going to go south and end up in Miami or someplace like that. But um, Jacksonville. Yeah. Eddie Goldman, you're my bear down. Good job. Now we snake it back. Shane, you get your bear up. Bear up. Definitely taking the layup here. Big Rob. Got to go there. I mean, this game was... I don't want to say that it was hard to watch, but I found myself standing up and inching closer to the TV, pulling Riley out of the chair. We were both, we both, I, like Riley fired like six chicken nuggets across my room when Mike Lennon threw out of that one sack because we thought he oh broke the God, record right man. there. And he's just, he's such a class guy. I didn't know a whole lot about Robert Quinn before he got here, but like today, I don't know if you heard his quote. You know, like he got the good guy award, and he's like, "You got two things in life: you have your word and your nuts, and you don't want to lose either." And I'm like, "That's so fucking great." You know, it's so, so true. But he's the dude; just gets it. I didn't hear it, that. It really bothered him what he put on tape last year. He's like, "I knew that wasn't me, and I knew I had to come back and 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 show something different." And when you're building a team, yeah, he's making a shitload of money. I get it. Pass rushers get paid. But when you're building a team, you need people like Robert Quinn. Talent talent aside, you need to build your team with people like Robert Quinn. Because I think Robert Quinn would be out there playing if he was getting the league minimum. I just think he loves football. And he is so fucking good. Man, he is so fun to watch. So, Robert Quinn... The sack master, man. The number one in, in Bears. Shane, That's great. Can you Better remember his jersey next year? Yeah. I think, look, I think Michael Strahan called in a favor to the Giants. How the fuck does they only drop back 11 times in that game? Oh, wow, they totally made it. Are you one kidding me? Those, he like in been, a blowout game, you only drop back. Could have been leading the league until Strahan was like, listen, Watt. this dude can't yeah. beat my record. TJ yeah. went fuck. Well, that record's well, probably going down, man. TJ Watt went fucking bonkers. Yeah. Did you see the? Cleveland. Did you see Joe Judge's press conference yeah, afterwards? That was, so That's bad. how that guy yeah. was like. People, old guys that used to be here, call me all the time, wishing they stayed here. And guys are going to be free agents. Want me? Want to stay? Yeah, because they know you're dumb enough to pay them, and they're not going to make as much somewhere else. That's the only reason why. That yeah. sounds very. What did what did uh, they say? People want our want to have our culture. That sounds. Yeah, the, the yeah, Giants are the enemy of the league too, cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, of course, like, yes. Yeah, our culture is the envy of the league. Yeah, yeah. Yes. sure it is. This guy, this network, stood for Robert Quinn, and 
Shane could attest that was one of the guys that I just absolutely loved because of what he was able to bend, dip, and be relentless. Obviously, playing on a bad wheel hurt. We've talked about this before. We talked about PFF. These guys will tell you the best ability is, is, is availability. Those I can the, give you a tweet yeah, right here, that's... Robert Quinn related. Yes. And it's from somebody that you guys might know. It's at Shane Marsa. That's me. But anyways, yeah. I tweeted out in 54 games with the Bears, Leonard Floyd had 18 and a half sacks. In 29 games with the Bears, Robert Quinn has 19. And this was before he, he did it. Um, in two more games played, 31 over the last two seasons, Floyd has 19 and a half to Quinn's 19. So that's, you know, oh, when people are close, when people are, well, it is, it's very close, but I mean, a lot of people are saying that the bears made a huge mistake, huge blunder by letting Leonard Floyd go. Robert Quinn has played in less games. Well, I don't even care about the sacks. The, Their play the, on the field isn't even close. Oh, what no, 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 no. Robert Quinn yeah. does in the run game. Yeah, Phil, you used to have guys <laughs> like Mike Brez. Oh my God. He got launched to the fucking moon. Used to say that Leonard Floyd was one of the best guys, you know, setting the edge in the NFL. And oh listen, you didn't you pay, draft you pay a guy fifteen Floyd. million a year. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why did you bring? Why did you draft uh, Leonard Floyd up? Oh, because he can set the edge. Now you don't do that in a fucking no. top ten. That that's a fucking problem. It is. Give me some fucking names. <laughs> Give this kid two fucking games. Give me some fucking names. I'm going to give you some fucking names. My bear up this week goes to Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney. Sorry, Claudio. I'm just watching him. Obviously, Claudio's looking something else. Feverishly no, looking at the roster right now. Some... Who can I take? Listen, I wanted to jump in before when you guys were talking about Mooney, though. Before you go. There's some... This dude, go you're saying he's not a number one. Maybe he's not a bona fide number one best in the league. But this dude might have a thousand yards on a really bad passing, one of the worst passing offenses. Fucking do that shit. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Phil. I'm sorry to cut you Listen, off. Listen, Darnell Mooney, to me, you know, is showing me the effort where I want to see it. It's down the field. Ball, be a be a pass catcher, but show effort to your team. What he was doing in the run game, yeah. I'll break down. It's but, amazing. Yeah, he's it's... not afraid to mix it up. And at 178 pounds, probably 180. 178. Yeah, right I was on the money. Look yeah. at that. He, he's just showing everybody why Allen Robinson's going. That's the kind of guy that I want. And I believe. I understand what Claudio is trying to say, but he's not there yet. But keep putting this effort on tape, work on your craft. He has the speed. And to Claudio's point, to be able to do what he's been able to do with numbers, I get it. It's it's uh, it's, it's really good. So carousel, I mean, like, yes, he's you know. he's something special. And again, I just thought his effort in the run game. You know, I could have easily taken Demo because it's easy. But Darnell, I wanted to give him some props for his effort blocking out there, and I'll I'll make an emphasis on that. So Darnell Mooney, you are my bear up this week. Cars. Uh, I'm gonna take the easy way out. My bear up is Mike Glennon for just being <laughs> Took mine. a wonderful <laughs> gift giver uh, to his former team. Uh, you could add really, an offensive game plan too for the Giants. You could have that. And did you see how chat. red his face was on after the first play when he went to the sideline? I mean, it, it, he got oh, fucking God. murdered by Gibson, but he yeah. was so embarrassed. If you run that back, I mean, the back of his neck was blood red. His <laughs> face was blood red. Can you imagine what was going through his fucking mind? Like. First fucking snap. This is my game. I'm going to show them what this they were missing year. out on. And <laughs> there it is. But no, I mean, he, he's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, again, when some team pays him $5 million in the offseason to be a backup quarterback because for some reason he will just still get that job. Uh, but Mike Lennon is my bear up 
for the week. Look at that. Maybe you can this back is another up love next year. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> My guy, Mikey Tenarelli. You know how to play the game. Who's your bear up? Well, since cars took mine, I thought no one would take that. But uh, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Travis Gibson. I mean, uh, the first play of the game, I could have fucking made that strip sack. I mean, he was unblocked. But, uh, you know, he's still uh, – he seems like he's improving. He, he, he seems like he's going to be a building block to this team uh, along with, you know, of course, Mac and Quinn. But, uh, you know, he, he's doing good things, and, and, and I hope to – you know, hope to see steady improvement with him under a different staff because one thing we don't talk about enough here as well is player development, and this this staff has failed miserably at that. So hopefully a new D coordinator, you know, a new D line coach, new outside linebacker coach, whatever you want to call it, have it, uh, you know, gets the most out of him, and, you know, you can continue to see that improvement. So my bear up is Travis Gibson. Great pick. Obviously, we talked earlier, if you're just tuning in now, Shane pointed out, can you believe that Travis Gibson had, what was it, 20? He had 20 snaps, and Bruce Irvin had 36. <laughs> I mean, who's yeah, shocked? Again, who's how shocked? How do you develop players yeah. when you don't play them? Yeah. He's, uh, here's a guy, not only is he playing really well, which makes it even worse. Think about it. Like, the kids got two sacks, two strip sacks in the game, and you're still – playing Bruce Irvin and this other dude, they just continue to play him, Kamara. I don't understand what Bilal Nichols and Kamara. Bilal has taken the precipitous fall from grace. I, I really thought he was going to play better, but oh, my God. Anyway, I'll go on a rant. Travis Gibson, great choice, limited snaps, was able to get two strip sacks in a game. Unbelievable. He was going to be my choice, but I wanted to. I knew someone was going to take him, and I wanted to praise Mooney before Claudio. <laughs> Claudio. All right, I got up. other guys. Bear up, Claudio. So listen, the deep line, obviously, we, we got a couple of them already, and they just went off this this game. And Angelo Blackson, another one. That we Angelo off. Blackson. Where, what about Angelo? We got what a, about Angelo? Angelo. What about him? <laughs> no, I mean, he got that safety. The dude just, you know, he, he's playing hard. What? And, uh, no, I think no, no, we're very economical, my family. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lean for me. It's the, lean. <laughs> it's the, it's the high pitched laugh for me every time. <laughs> the question was Do you have Netflix? <laughs> I think that's, that's what the question is. No, 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 no. We're very economical. Man. Angelo oh, Blackson, I'm sure, has Netflix. Um, so, yes, yeah. good call. He's Claudia. my bear up. Angelo, Angelo Blackson. Blackson. Give me some fucking names. Come on, Sheree. Give him some fucking names. Here. This is tough. <laughs> Your bear up. I'm going to give him a name he already said. I'm going to have to go with Tonga. Outside of just the the block, but he had a pretty solid game, he so I'm excited to well. see what he's gonna do next season. There's another confusing personnel the, the politics over performance. Why isn't this kid out there getting some reps every time he's out there? Berlissimo on X's with the O's was breaking this stuff down. It's gonna be a nice segue here. As we wrap up, bear up, bear down, Tonga continues to take on double teams, make the line of scrimmage in the backfield, do everything he needs to, but guess how many reps he got? Let's. Who can make a guess on how many? 13. 15. 10. 8. Not including <laughs> the fucking offensive uh let me double check. Somebody give me that stat. Whatever okay. it is, it's not enough. Yeah. Right. He, that's including the fucking play at fullback. This is the kind of stuff that just baffles us. And we break this stuff down. If you're not a patron, I know Mikey T supports us. You know who's as not a, a patron? patron? Who? Angelo. Right. Angelo. No. He's Angelo, since you're yeah. the guest, this is the shout out segment. You got anybody you'd like to shout out? tonight uh 
I, I like to give a shout out to all the people that coached me in Lemon Hall. Scott McQueenie, Scott, oh. Scott Medeiros. Yes. Coach- That was what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> that was not me, Angelo. Power. <laughs> oh, oh my God, Angelo. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> that guy Shane is that was the wrong that was the wrong one. He's, got he's, the such a, <laughs> he's a smart ass that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the over there. That yeah. guy Shane. No, go ahead. Keep naming those guys up because I know all of them. Go ahead. Stop. <laughs> Phil, he had twenty one. So twenty one. Well, twenty one. The eight. He had eight special team snaps, but he did have twenty one defensive snaps. Okay, so the person who sent me that stat was wrong. Thank you, Cars. So we got but one still, more than Gibson. So that's got more, some, one more something. than Gibson, and, and only three location. more than Marcus Hunt. So that's oh, always Jesus. a great, Ooh, great. What the wow. fuck is that? God help me! It's unbelievable. Listen, as Shane <laughs> brings us back to Angelo, Angelo uh, will be back. I think he's going to come on at some point, Shane. He gave me some uh, New Year's and Christmas love, and I think he's had. No, anyway. no, 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 Coach. No, I can't, I can't be, the, be funny. Can't be the funny guy. No, we might have to bring him to a game next year. We gotta bring, bring him. To the, we got. We got. Any well, that's what we got to do. Cars. The yeah. Bears play in New York twice next twice. year. Twice, Giants and Jets, and, and, and New England. They go yeah, all three. three in this area. To do them back. I was to telling back to Shane. Back. Yeah, he, he needs to come dress in his security uniform and just sit there and be the <laughs> yeah. security. <laughs> security will be like, <laughs> we might have to do the the meetup in in the city. Oh, we could have great. a new a t- yeah. TTNL meet and greet in New York. Phil Ooh. can bring Diddy. <laughs> yeah, a little Diddy. <laughs> Will, would I Angelo am. drive the scooter? <laughs> oh, God. Don't make me pull No, that no, no. Up. It's too dangerous, cars. It's all right, all right. Because he still trunk. owes me that ride for my birthday. So, you yeah. know, I'm trying trying to collect on those <laughs> no, things. You, you, you only had a limited amount of time to turn oh. that on him. Yeah. Listen, become a patron. We'll talk about these plays. We're going to break it down. In fact, Fairlissimo, my buddy, he – was showing you why Tonga needs to be more involved. We look at the tape. Thomas uh, Graham Jr., why should he be out there more? We looked at it. Become a patron. Here's a taste of X's with the O's. Every Saturday morning, you get stuff like this with my dad as well. Me, Berlissimo, and my dad. X's with the O's. DDP. Coach O. Berlissimo. And they actually figure out the whys. Yeah, he gets the to the time. races because Daniels actually does a great job. But they did all that <laughs> moving around. Get the quarterback right into position again. A crying out oh, loud. He's out, getting fancy. Out, he's I haven't said it, but Phil said it a hundred times. It's all trick plays. A trick with the wrong guy. He would been better off pulling the ball and him going up the hole. Never go backwards to get one yard. Look at that formation right there. They're consistently in this kind of shit. Where, say you push Allen Robinson way outside that number. Put him way out there. And then put someone way down here. All of a sudden, the box gets a little less tight. But you can tell that the accountability of when it comes. No one's calling anybody out on that defense. Those linebackers have to maintain gap responsibility full speed. You got to press that thing inside out. So when he exactly. oversets here and he gets outside, that step, that right foot yeah. step, sets yeah. him too wide. Yeah. And now you've turned that defensive end in into a two gap player who can tackle inside or outside your foot. Matt Nagy sold himself because he's a good talker. He is a good talker, but what you need as a head coach and a GM is someone who's going to pick the right people and put them in the right places and play to their strengths. And you've also got to be able to, and it's crucial as any leader, is to be able to accept when you make a mistake. Look, I gave him a chance, I gave him an opportunity, I put him here, I gave him this responsibility, I did the tools, I did that to, to help him to do it. It's clearly not working. 
I've never heard someone say I made a mistake in this hire. And I mean, regardless of if you you're not a football person, you still hired someone. I'm going to tell you right. something right now. Those coordinators and everybody that's coaching on staff could be great. If you got a guy up there that's a schmuck, you're not going anywhere. And that's what's happening. And when you get a real leader, he'll hire the guys that are going to do the job. Get a coach in here that puts a priority on accountability, game planning. I don't see any of this. If I was to assess any coach and they're in shotgun on fourth and one, fire that coach. It's just so much that you could do from under center that you can't do in shotgun. Plus, you're not five yards away from the line of scrimmage. The yep. Bears culture for me, all the way back since I was a kid, was the toughest guys they were. These guys are pussies. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking down the key plays. Big moments. And take a deeply detailed look back at each week's big play performers. <laughs> oh my God! Exclusively for TTNL patrons. X is with the O's. There it is. Did that swearing? And there you have it, guys. You got a nice little <laughs> <laughs> You can't help yourself. Oh my God. I'm about to sell the uh, X's with the O's. He plays that. Makes me tear up in laughter. Anyway, my dad was talking about the secondary <laughs> and how much swearing. of a bunch of pussies, pussies. you got out. Hey, wow. he's keeping it 100. Yeah. It's totally worth your seven bucks each and every week. Um, we break it down on the tape, as you could see. Those are some highlights. And we'll be running that on our uh, network as we go to the offseason. What free agents do they sign? We use the tape to look at it. The draft mob uh, promo is being built right now, Shane. So you'll be happy about that. And uh, a bunch of other stuff on our patron side, breaking down the tape like you know that we do each and every week. That was X's with the O's. You know what the next, it's Cherie's favorite part of the show. I mean, if I'm going to root for a team, I want to give it all I next got. Next play. Pass. 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 There was no you rhyme or reason. just drove down the field. Mr. Montgomery yeah. breaks a huge run. If he scores on the run, you don't got to worry. But you do got to worry because he gets tackled at the freaking... 15. There was no oh, rhyme. Next play, Jocka. What's your prediction? The old line is playing shitty. What's the skinny? No identity. If Nagy can't find it, Bears will seep it with the enemy. Red zone opportunity. Once again, they gotta settle for three. The reality of coaching when the defense has to carry the team. Prediction: What you think would happen versus what does? A light year from the Super Bowl, and now we're losing buzz. Nagy has no answers, just predictions that don't change. The seven is the truth. Give it by the guys and feel ashamed. Bold Prediction, another original TTNL song, and Cherie, your favorite song, right? Or is, yes. yes. Maron. Maron, Maron me, Mike Tenarelli, since you're our guest, I'm going to let you go first on this. You know how to play this game, right? You yes, watch sir. this show long enough. You're not like Jackal. He's on, he's producing the show. We put him on the spot. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> I love Jackal. I see him. He's hopefully he's off the the toilet cars. Hopefully he's back. I, anyway. I, 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 
Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Cars wasn't here last Cars, week, so he has no idea. Cars he, has no idea he, he left. Had a little uh, shitty porcelain. He had a porcelain. Yeah. Where he had to. He was leave doing shit. Okay. Show he was doing shit. Quick. He finally, he finally was shit. doing shit. It finally just doing happened shit. to be yeah. off the show, right? Claudia? Happened to be dripping out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe? Can you believe they're still together though? <laughs> <laughs> His butt cheeks after all the shit yeah, they've right. been through. Oh, bring that fat ass over here. I want to get it in my mouth. His wife was not saying that, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Bold predictions. Mike, Magic Mike. Who gave me that nickname? No, I just... Somebody oh, changed my, uh, my 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 title <laughs> there. I don't know who it was. <laughs> it wasn't me. Wait, wait. Cherie. Oh, it was Porter. Cherie. Porter. Give me some fucking names. <laughs> <laughs> when in oh, doubt, <laughs> shame. Yeah. When in no, doubt, it wasn't me. I promise. It, was it definitely not. wasn't me because I don't type. During you can hear me type. Hear that? <laughs> anyway. Oh, it's all. Good. I don't think this is very bold, but I, I, I'm going to go with my man Robert Quinn. I think he's going to get two sacks to give him 20 on a year. And wow. I think uh, to go back to one of my favorite coaches of mine, uh, Robert Quinn plays like his hair is on fire. And that's my bold prediction. Nice. What's the 20? score, though? Don't score, pull a jack over here. I'm, I'm going to go uh, 2013 Vikings. I just think that I, – I, I don't know. I, I, I think Nagy – Hasn't completely lost the locker room. It's the last game of the year. I just don't see. I I don't see him winning. They won three in a row. That's a shock. So I, I just uh, I just want to blow this up. I, I I you know I always root for them to win. But if they lose, it's just even easier as Andy's saying just to launch this whole fucking thing and and, and start this what I believe to be the most important off season in the past ten to fifteen years. Let's start it. Sunday night after we lose and uh, Nagy's launch that night at 1045, like Shane said. <laughs> there you go. Bull prediction. Hey, cut it out. Claudio, oh. the barber. <laughs> yeah, no cut it out. All right. <laughs> no cut um, it out. Dan. I'm going I'm going. the Bears are going to win, man. Fields is going to be playing. The He's Cousins playing. playing. Have yes. We, uh, he is today. They announced it. Yeah, they activated. Oh, here's he liked that. You, you knew it wasn't going to be Kellen Mond. Jesus Christ, Jesus. that was about the worst fucking endorsement ever. I thought Sean Mannion started the game, right? Yeah, is that his yeah, name? Well, did you see the reporters with uh, Zimmer on no. Kellen Mond? Like, get to see it. <laughs> it's yeah. the greatest you, thing I've ever seen. Do you did think someone that pull you it should, up? You should uh, get a look at Kellen Mond next week. You know, the end of the season. He's like, no. They said, "Well, why not?" And he's like, "I see him every day." <laughs> yeah, don't you don't you want to see him in the game? No, I see him every day. Oh yeah, I see him every day. That's a Adam Hogue's oh pick at number twenty five after 25. a trade down in the first round. Adam Hogue. Hopefully, we could get Adam Hogue on. I like Adam Hogue. Um, I've had a good relationship. I would like to get him on the show. I don't understand. <clears throat> Why we can't do that, fans? Can we, somebody make that happen? And I will ask him to his face. <clears throat> Kellen Mond at twenty five. Yeah, I, I think it's just he was doing a weekly mock draft. I think he just <coughs> threw it out there to be, you know, change it up a little bit. But oh, yeah, don't no make excuses way. for him. Don't. Oh, I'm not. Excuse. I'm just saying that's what he was doing. He's doing a mock oh, okay. draft every week. Okay. Claudio. So yeah, my it. score. I got the Bears winning twenty-four to ten. I think it's going to be wow. another good twenty-four ten Bears yeah. in Minnesota. I think they're going to go off, go out. You know, does Justin Jefferson out. die? <laughs> and my, <laughs> my, my <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> with Kirk Cousins throwing to him, yeah, right. may, maybe. <laughs> If the defense gets pressure on them. All right, go ahead, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he is the Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> of this podcast. He gets no respect. No respect. No respect. Fuck. Claudio. Claudio deserves uh, all of He's got his just own take... segment. He My just produce... doesn't do it anymore. I don't what, do it. I'm not doing what it. What happened to you? I, just, I don't got time for it right now. I'll do it next week. Last week, I'll do it. We need a... Um, 
We That'll need be my to bold cut prediction. it out next week. No, my bold prediction. <laughs> bold prediction. Um, <laughs> he's gonna do his. No, he's gonna do his segment. Darnell Mooney. <laughs> no. Darnell Mooney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Mooney. give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> you can't. I know That's what you're gonna do. Clip. That's the OG. That's clip. the OG. You're gonna have yeah. Darnell That's Mooney. That's from the old barbershop. Yeah. You you're gonna have Darnell Mooney running, throwing, and catching a touchdown, aren't you? No, but I will he is catching one of Justin Fields' three touchdowns. That's my bull. There's his right. bold Fields, prediction. Three touchdowns. One of them will be to Mooney, of course. Three tutties three in a tutties. Bears win. Look at you. Could be mixed, run and pass. So just three total touchdowns. <laughs> That was All right, good good show, everybody. <laughs> nice. Thanks for stopping. Me. And broadcast. Where is that button? Hold on. Where is it? Oh my God. <laughs> Cherie, your prediction and your bold prediction. Uh, so I do think the Bears are gonna win this one. Um, I just always feel like we split with the Vikings. So just based off of that, I'm gonna say Bears win 2017. 20. My- Bow prediction is our defense holds Cook to 70 yards. Nice. That works. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. 20 to 17 hold. They always play well. Is Akeem on the injury report today? Is he because he fucking hates Dalvin Cook? I don't think there's ever been a player. I I thought he hated Drew Brees. I think he hates Dalvin Cook even more. Watch every every tackle. Every he's play. Fun. He's just he's talking going mad shit. He's Dalvin, talking mad play. shit to him. Something Dalvin yeah, did. Keem was on with an ankle. Did not participate. Oh, oh. boy. Mm-hmm. That's why he's it's only Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, it's only Wednesday. So that's, that's pretty normal. Don't want to really, see his bear, bear career end that way. I need to see him. On the field. Robert Quinn didn't participate either with a shoulder. Oh boy, because he's carrying play. the defense. He'll play. He'll play. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they'll call up some random guy off the street, and Travis Gibson won't see a single snap <laughs> exactly. because of it. So don't don't worry. <laughs> Typical. Shane Marsaw, your bold prediction. I hate the Minnesota Vikings. I think I have made that very aware on here. I think the Bears win. I think. In true Bears fashion, they always seem to do something at the end of the year, and I think Justin Fields is going to provide us with some momentum going into the offseason where we get excited after the game because he played well, and then we're going to look forward to to Nagy and company getting launched. But uh, yeah, I think the Bears are going to win the game 22-19. to 19. I'll say two nineteen. Yep, two touchdowns from Justin Fields, and both of them will be to Darnell Mooney. So we get a wow. safety. In I'm not the only one yep. that likes Mooney. We get a here, safety in there. Yeah, we just got Look a safety. You. Yeah, we just got a safety last week. We did. It was Glennon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More well, importantly, Glennon she was on the running back. Just was on the running back, Sheree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, we, man, will we, we, yeah. we got every play against there was the Giants. A, uh, Eddie Jackson's strip there. I thought that was a fuck. Yeah. He got fucked. That was a touchdown. I agree. Yeah. I really did. All right. One My prediction play. Bears win, right? 24 23. My bold prediction on this is it's a last second touchdown pass. From, from David Montgomery? No. <laughs> totally Are you kidding? Jakeem like, Grant. Get off Jakeem 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 Grant. Get off <laughs> Jimmy Graham in the end zone. I'm specifically saying Jimmy oh, Graham be another walk off, like, on a jump game? ball. Yes. On a jump ball. I see it, so I'm saying it. I'm seeing it, so I'm saying it. Jimmy Graham to end the game. They're down, and they win the game by one. To Jimmy Graham, Justin Fields touchdown on the last play of the game. There you go. Cars. Uh, so I have us winning uh, because, uh, as Shree pointed out, we are eleven and ten against Minnesota. We basically have continually 
just we just keep splitting with them. So I think we're going to do it. Uh, I have us winning. I don't know. Let's make it a barn burner. 16, 13. Um, my bold prediction is that Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson will have to get split up uh, from fighting on the sideline as Jefferson is going to be wide open all day and Kirk Cousins is going to badly miss him over and over. So they will fight. That is my bold prediction. You got to fight. Real, fight real on quick. the sideline. Real quick. You're frozen. Oh, he, he froze. Oh, man. my. With a thousand. Holy cow. You froze on your you, real quick. You, I, I wish I want someone to grab a screen grab of that because <laughs> nope, it's perfect for that. We need a screen grab or a clip of so, that, Caden. What did so you Bear say Truth's now? Asking, he's he asking nine, me. But, yeah, 929 yards. So he has 71 yards. Nine now? Yeah. yeah. So oh, I, yeah, I definitely I think he's over 100. Yeah, you I'll think that it. Matt Nagy's that smart, though? <laughs> Who else is Not he going to throw? It would be so, he, he should be it would be so dude, Do you remember, like, Bobby Ingram? guy that threw an like, extra touchdown. Remember Bobby Ingram, Mitch. like, had, like, three years in a row where he ended to, like, 996, oh, yeah. 991. Yeah, because I was a big Bobby Ingram fan. Loved him. The fucker would catch a house if you threw it to him. Oh my God, I love Bobby Ingram. Move the chains, Bobby. <laughs> That's what I used to yell on Madden, by the way. She agrees with the decisions w- that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. <laughs> Ted it's, Phillips is such head, a it's, dick. It's that. You know who he reminds me of? And I love the dude because he's funny as shit. But he could play Ted Phillips in a fucking movie. Is Levy, the dude from Up Shits Creek? And, oh, and Eugene Amer- Levy. I yeah, like the dad from American Pie. American yeah. Pie dad. He looks eyebrows. over with those with this head. You, you got to watch it again. Shane pointed it out to me. Yeah. Now it infuriates me, Mike. Yeah, he looks up with like a. He's like, Talkiness. yeah, he says mm-hmm. she's she pissed off. Cost. And it was like he was trying to sell it. Like, yeah, we're we're yeah. this old fucking we bag of bones is like super pissed. She, this is 2017. She us a couple duty heads. Yeah. Right. This is before yes. John Fox. Just focus on Ted, Ted. Phillips. Just and when watch George Ted, says people. she's pissed off, he just <laughs> he does one of these. He's looking down like he doesn't give a fuck. And he's like, yeah, it's, just, it's so fucking it annoying. It infuriates me. That this guy, can you imagine? This guy is involved in all these things that all these blog boys, Mike said, no, he's not. He's just the accountant. No, he's, he's not involved. involved in football decisions. He only hires the we, people that make football yeah, decisions. Yeah. Me and Shane would fight and cars would fight these fucks. Like, what are you fucking thinking? Who's making these choices, you assholes? This, this is this- the football guy. The thing that still, and I, I, I want to pull this up from from when we had the show post the co- during the press conference when Potash literally went to George and he's like, "So you guys say we have all this, yeah. we don't win under Ted. When it, when is winning under Ted going to be an issue?" And his response is, "Well, at some point, you know, we're going to report to somebody not on the football side in this organization." And Potash is like, "That's great, but." You guys have a losing record under Ted, and he was like, "I I had no idea." It was like this. I had no idea. They're completely blissfully unaware of how shitty they have been. They have a losing record under Ted Phillips. A losing record. It's and incredible. He's horrific, horrific. His reputation around the league is a joke. A joke. Everybody that knows this franchise wants him gone. Ballard, that was his number one thing. Got to get Ted the fuck out of here. The people that want to fix it know this. We're going to play it in a second, but I want to be reminded, Shane, this was 2017. Yeah, it was just them. fired Mark Tressman, yeah, right? Yeah, it was them leading into to Pace and Fox. and of here, course. So here's where Mama was pissed. Happy birthday, Virginia. She Watch agrees that. with the decisions that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. 
What's up, gangsters? Like, that is all oh that is God. at that point. It's not even a, an acknowledgement. It's like, yeah, she fucking... Like, oh! She even used the word pissed. And this is a lady who normally draws the line at yeah. ticked. And if that doesn't tell you how angry she is, she said... It. Gangsters, what's up, guys? Oh, That's my it. God. Gangsters, what's up, guys? It's the most obnoxious moment. I... I and then they came back with collaboration and all of that stuff. And that was in, you know, they end up hiring Matt. They kept Matt Nagy last year. And now here we are. So we're all, and yes, if you're a patron, www.thetapeneverlies.com, we will be going live as soon as the firing is announced. How did they handle it? Breaking all of that stuff down on our patron side. So, yes, I saw a few people ask, are we going to have a live show? Yep, we are going to be live on the patron side. Uh, become a patron to tapeneverlies.com to become a patron. And we will go live, break it down the fucking halls of Hallis Hall. How do they handle this? George Hallis is rolling over in his grave telling you right now his daughter didn't have the wherewithal to hire the right people she never has is that all our bold predictions guys got them all knocked out everybody went i don't want to skip over jackal are you on the potty jackal nope <laughs> where is this invention here is called the cob quickie cob quickie no jackal had a bounce he's actually having oh, a minor it. He has a minor procedure tomorrow. He's got to get up early. Yes. I wanted to say yeah. that, but I'm saving yeah. it for my shout out. Big plays oh, are nice. Well. They're good. We need more of those. Speaking of shout outs, this is the part of the show where we wrap it all up and we give some shout outs and some. Love. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holla at you. Keep it 100 cool. Gotta show love to Shout out. I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holla at you. Keep it 100 cool. Gotta show love to From the fans in the stands to the follows on the gram. On the gram. Thanks for your support. Showing love in the DM. We stay special strong. Fight together. Together till the end. Now it's time to shout out worldwide friends and fam. Like the network that keeps it real. 100 crew. So many in the world that I gotta show love to. For some, this part, see the show is at its end. But for me, it's so important. Thank the charter members and, and the fans. Built the network, speak the truth to the tape. Never run around the truth. No narratives we create. Set them straight. No bubble screen on fourth and eight. Call your chain getting nervous. Cause keeping them up to Late. That's it, no more to say to get the shot of vital. But hurry up, cause the postman's getting homicidal. Shout out, I know you hear me, baby. Shout out, I know you see me, baby. Shout out, we gotta holla at you. Keep it 100 cool, gotta show love to. Shout out, I know you hear me, baby. Shout out, I know you see me, baby. Shout out, we gotta holla at you. Keep it 100 Honey crew, gotta show love to the network that keeps it real. Sis is strong. The, the, the tape never lies network. The tape never lies network. There you go. How are we doing? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's pretty close. We just we gotta just allow Eugene to be mean. Gene's got to get into. It's gotta can't get you into see him scene. looking at somebody and go, "We'll just tell Virginia that we ate the pie." Like that is all <laughs> I see in that picture right then and there. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> yes, we got the music playing. Yeah. We got that. Yeah, Claudia. I got it. Uh, oh, you got it. Yeah, Shane got this it. Is Mike, he's got it. I sorry, Mike. He's I got didn't a see bounce, your thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Do your do your thing, man. And I'll add this. Yeah. Okay. 
There we go. Mikey T, I know you got to bounce. We love you. Appreciate you jumping on the show. No Shouting you, you out guys, for man. coming on. Shouting Express you guys out as well. Like I said, man, you guys, uh, everything you say is is just what I'm thinking. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I wanted to shout out my fiance. I'm getting yes. married uh, in, in two months here, in February 25th. So, oh yeah, my, that's uh, my son's birthday. Oh Wait, no, it's Riley's that's awesome. birthday. Yeah, I keep and, checking and I, the and, mail. Am I getting the speech <laughs> to invite or like, <laughs> this It's in the mail, Phil. I'll see you in Cabo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just take the invite to the. Oh, it's uh it's an at what do they call this destination, destination. destination. destination wedding yep. look at you Cabo. Yeah. Cabo. Yeah. look at you how so, are you uh, jealous yeah, of you right and, now and also shane give my best to riley for me well, i want to mention that as well Thank and you. uh i'll be glad to come back anytime guys love you and uh yeah. i can't wait to see thanks, what happens man. sunday night thanks guys thanks man mikey t we love you man you, bro. all the best congratulations that's congrats. Yeah. Thanks, Enjoy guys. Enjoy the wedding. Give them hell in Cabo. I will. Have a Talk couple of, uh, what was that? Funky monkeys. Coco Locos. <laughs> Gotta have that, Drake. I'm telling you. Bahama Mamas. Bahama Mama. Cherie's like, what are these? He's just oh, throwing no, out. I'm aware of all of those. My oh, okay. She's like, I'm aware of all of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike right. Tenarelli, former bachelor stayed on the contest. whole show he was came stayed yeah. on the free whole show, show pretty much I mean, yeah yes. he jumped on early and stayed late uh, he's yeah, preparing we, for his 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 future marriage we have video of claudio in cabo at the at the reception <laughs> oh bring you. that fa- <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because it's true oh <laughs> so bad. sheree yeah. Happy New Year to everybody from TTNL, all the people watching live here. We didn't get to wish everybody a Happy New Year on Keeping It 100. We've done it on BHL, but not here. So Happy New Year to you. Do you have some shout outs? Yes. Um. Again, like, Happy New Year. Uh, definitely want to shout out Cam. Um, yeah. The fact that he's up, I know he's still in a hospital, but the fact that he's up, he's like, he's listening. We know he's listening. He's able to interact with the chat in the chat. So that's a good sign. So welcome back, Cam. And shout out to the rest of the CCNL crew. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Um, how was your new year, Sheree? Did you celebrate? Of course I did. <laughs> Oh, what was his name? Oh my god, no. <laughs> oh, oh. It was a, a girl's uh name. Ooh, even better. Everybody... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Somebody HR. get the spray <laughs> bottle and just start hitting him oh, with it, would you? No, oh, HR's gonna be getting hit fat ass over here. The newest invention here is called the Cobb Quickie. Sure. Partying with Sheree next year. Oh my gosh. COVID tried to ruin it, but we had our little get together, went to a restaurant on the waterfront and watched the fireworks at midnight. So nice. It was pretty cool. What 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 kind of restaurant was it? Uh it was like a steakhouse. Mm. Obviously a steakhouse. Shut up! Don't don't be surprised, guys. I've got something special for you in my sack. Ooh. Oh Jesus, Shane! <laughs> this is going downhill faster than normal. Steakhouse? Did you get the surf and turf? No, I just no. got a regular sirloin. Lick and split. Nice. Shut! Nice. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh lord. Oh, can't help himself. Goodness. He just can't help himself. <laughs> Phil. Can you hear me? This is your dad speaking. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm in space. I'm in space. <laughs> That's the best part. I'm I forget about Alex Acevedo in the back. <laughs> Uh, Ivan, I saw <laughs> Ivan earlier and Alex. Are they still there? Shout them out. Great job, Sheree. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, your steak. 
Was it a good steak though? For yeah. real? Yeah, this was a the restaurant I hadn't been to, so I was. It was pretty good food, and it's walking Shame. distance for me. So. Hold it. Shade. Hold it in. That's it. Being nice. I'm showing some restraint. <laughs> Somebody get a spray bottle. <laughs> Just start hitting them with it. Oh my God. Listen, showing some restraint. I'm glad you enjoyed the steakhouse. Claudio, the barber. Yes. Shout out to everybody here. Always making a good Wednesday night, of course. Jackal, good luck tomorrow. Uh, guy, Corn Planter. In this chat, he made me laugh a couple times or whatever, so he's in there. HL Priest, Ron G, Eugene Cope, they, they reached out to me uh, last week about my daughter. I want to thank you. Shout out to you guys. Um, and uh, that's it, you know? My kids, everybody, just shout out to everybody. Everybody that's listening, thank Great you for listening. Job. Thank you for being fans. So, shout out. Happy Good New job, Year. Claudia. Did you go Thanks. out for New Year's? Did you do anything? Yeah. Well, I brought my daughter, I mean, my daughter, my wife out for dinner. And uh, she had salmon. I had uh, some stuffed shrimp. It was great. Claudia went for La the Lupa, stuffed shrimp. La Lupa, Phil knows. La Lupa, you know. La, La, La Lupa. Lupa. La Lupa with our thorough. La Lupa. We got Arturo. some good food out here in Connecticut, guys. Everybody got. Oh, I can't wait. To Connecticut. Me and Phil will take you out. We got Big good Steve. Food. Uh, Chris Zorich. Cool Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, Alex Acevedo on fucking angelo's moped gotta get everybody out here sheree steph's getting your hoodie You're keeping it 100 blinged up hoodie gotta get you out here sheree yeah we're gonna do everything give you the pizza la lupa stuffed shrimp what's the go-to shane for new year's is it like New Year's Day is black eyed peas and greens and cornbread, but New Year's that's Eve. That, that's that's the all supposed southern. to be black. That's the southern. Yeah, we do the, the European thing here because oh. of Eli. So, they, New Year's they, Eve European thing or New Year's Day? You just randomly take over your neighbor's house? Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's good, good, good. Yeah. No, I mean, she's got these. I actually could post a picture of it. She does these like little. You're talking about food, right? Just yeah. like these little sandwich things that, you know, kind of like finger food type deal. And we drank. Leading you know. up to, you don't have a big dinner nothing like that? No, we were very low key reserved this year. We spent the day, um, New Year's Eve day. We were in the city kind of just hanging out with the kids all day. We went out yeah, to New Year's Day is like always feels like a down trip. Yeah. Uh, well, because you know, you like know you're heading back to work and yeah, shit like that. It's all that. done. But New Year's Eve is more excitement to the meal. Like Claudio had stuffed shrimp. She had a big steak. Sirloin you went with or ribeye? Sirloin. Sirloin. How do you get your steak done? Oh, shrimp? my God. Medium. Please. Medium. Okay, Good. I can deal with medium. Good, because you would have been kicked out. <laughs> my wife will around. go medium well. I go... No, no. That? Right. I have to break my mom from doing well done. I'm like, that's burnt. Oh Stop. Cars is very <laughs> picky. Cars, do eat... well, how do you do your steak? Uh, medium rare. Oh, good. Good oh, man. Good. I You're was in... worried there for a second that you'd be. Oh, no, well you've done. missed some of my arguments with people on Twitter where I call them basically serial killers if you do medium well. Um, but that's that's the way I view that. That's un-American. That's completely un-American. Okay. I got one shout out. I have to shout out. Go ahead. Lord, Lord Cars. Lord, <laughs> out, out the, Lord, Lord Cars. Don't encourage it. I just Lord found Cars. out about this. this don't, is, don't encourage it, please. Got, I don't know if you saw it. It's right there. It's <laughs> official. Look, his name says Lord Cars. Lord Cars. My, when we got home yeah, from explain, Florida... Explain. When I got home from Florida yesterday, my daughter likes to do a little artwork, and she drew on a note, I love you, Lord Dad, and it was done. It was absolutely done. I'm in. It is stuck, and it's uh, we're just rolling with it. Well, it's a good I name love to it. Have. Cars, do you have a shout-out? Uh, you know, really, I want to thank my in-laws for putting up with four additional people in their house for over a week so we could spend time with them. So it was uh, it was very nice to be able to get away and not actually do any work for uh, for a while. So 
That's my shout out. Did you do anything special for New Year's? Do you have a dinner? Uh, so we went to, uh, She's my wife has two friends uh, that are both doctors, which is awfully humbling. Uh, and we went out for hibachi on uh, New Year's Eve with the kids and both sets oh, of nice. grandparents. So it was... Saki? Saki, squirt the His stuff. daughter Saki. did. Yeah, yeah, my daughter, <laughs> they did lemonade for my daughter. Nice. Uh, and she... Uh, the we call it the birth of Keg Stan Karstensen happened that night because she was going for about thirty seconds and I'm terrified wow, wow, of what wow. that's going to look like down the line. Wow. So yeah, it was a lot of but it was a lot of fun. It, you know, who doesn't love hibachi and watching someone cook food in front of you? Yeah, yeah that, I'm a big fan of hibachi. Onions on fire. I feel yep. like going to hibachi. The volcano. Oh yeah, and the little guy that pees. Is it the pier one? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you, you did you time. catch the shrimp cars? Did you or is it? A it was basketball? actually broccoli that the yeah, guy they were flipped. Eating you off. When you yeah, had a good it, one, they're giving you shrimp. Mm -hmm. At the bad ones, they're throwing veggies at you. <laughs> yeah. Although the steak was amazing, so I was can't it? complain was too it? much. Yeah. It was a fillet, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like that car. Shane Marsaw. Keep it simple. Shout Gonna shout out my kids. You know, love them, love them to death. Emmy found out that she can laugh uh, <laughs> yesterday, so that was. I was actually trying she to discover her uh, laugh. Yeah, oh, yeah it was one of the best birthday sounds. Birthday to Emmy. Yeah. That's gotta yep. be one of the best sounds. Turned, I was Honestly. actually trying to load up a, a video to to share she with you turned... guys. But yeah, she turned. Uh, Seven months on the third. Oh so gosh, yeah, seven it's going, months. It's going fast. Her birthday already happened. No, 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 no. Got me no, seven months old. Baby, sorry. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I was trying to flip that around so I could play it for it. Maybe I can get it loaded up during your shout out, but no. Yeah. Uh bring it in. Her and Riley are they're just, you know, every day they're obviously everything that Riley went through, he's thriving, his hair's coming back in completely and doing great in school and it seems like we discover something new with with an emmy every single day so i'm blessed that way you know to have two great kids that i love to be around and you know love to wake up to each and every day you know it is a lot of hard work especially with my daughter she can be a gigantic pain in the ass sometimes but i wouldn't trade her in for the world so shout out to those two you gotta you know stop and smell the roses sometimes and that's what we did uh, last week, spent some time in the city with the kids, just kind of put the phone away and just chilled out and breathed a little bit. So enjoyed it. But Emmy and Riley, I love you guys. Nice. Well said, man. Uh, did you do anything special? You just had the sandwich foods. Kind of um, asked you, right? Yeah, we just kind of, we hung, yeah, we went out to eat. Um, oh, New that's, Year's where'd Eve you go? Hey. Oh, uh, day. You go the next day. Okay. No, New Year's Eve day. We were, like I said, we were in the city. Oh, and we, that day. Every place was gotcha. packed. We actually just walked in the Cheesecake Factory and had a couple drinks. And Jeez, that ate. line is fucking long. Yeah. That was about the, the shortest line was Cheesecake Factory. Really? Yeah. But, I mean, it was still That's ridiculous. good food there, bro. Every time you go, it's like an yeah. hour wait minimum. Exactly. But every place else was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. No, we had well, a great day. I'm glad you did. Like I said, happy new year to every one of you guys. I thank you guys for jumping on tonight on the best bears podcast show on the planet because we're more than a podcast. We're actually live here talking. Some of you are listening on the podcast version, but here we are on the show talking, breaking down film become a patron to tape never lies.com truly helps us out all the shows will be breaking down giants bears and some of those defensive performances by trevis gibson and tonga and who the hell else they were playing out there obviously robert quinn that'll be this saturday obviously the tape will come out this week as well you heard our new song we'll end the show with that p.o.p performance over politics has been our anthem here all season long and for many years before 
my shout outs are, are going to be quick tonight. First of all, everybody in the chat right now has to hit the like button. Smash the fucking like button. Exactly, Tom. Smash the like button. Let everybody know about this show, about the network. We're going to be breaking this stuff down. I want to shout out Jim Larison, Shane Marsaw, Chris Jackal, Cherie, Chris Zorich, Claudio. I said Jackal. I'll say him again. I wish him all the best tomorrow, Chris, on your surgery. All jokes aside, uh, I'll be praying for you. Um, I want to shout out Bullets, Cam, listening in on the show. We started that GoFundMe for Cam, this network did. And Cam, just if you're tuning in now, is actually listening and interacting in the chat. And that says a lot about this network. We we take a lot of shit and people steal a lot of our shit. And it, it fires me and Shane up. But at the end of the day, how many people, how many lives, as my wife would say, shout out to her, have we touched with either laughter or debate comedy music whatever it is that's what we try to do and strive to do here i want to shout out my boy um cool kennedy for his work and his production on the performance over politics song i want to shout out my guy ron g who produced the x's with the o's promo you gotta love that jason onstad i see him in the chat i want to shout out mike tenarelli for everything he did tonight stayed on the show all night my guy Corey kennedy this dude is making photos for me um cory has his own business i was trying to shout it out give him a plug here restore cac pictures glamour and restoration follow Corey kennedy you can find him he's in the keeping it 100 facebook group if you have any pictures or whatever shout out Corey. i'm not just giving him a plug. He's a great human being, a big fan. My guy Vito. My guy I saw Anthony Walker earlier. Uh, Bob Lobla. Even though Bob's always giving me shit. I, I love Bob. Prince Curry. Uh, Cl- Corn Planter. As, uh, Matt Karstensen. Of course, Matthew Karstensen. Alex Acevedo. Um, Caden Whitlow. Always busting his ass producing the open shame was the open audio a little low again because when me and him bit, tested it it was it sounded fine so we gotta up it i got that i gotta brag about my kid one more time i got that video loaded up go ahead so let's you guys bring it sit up. back and listen to my daughter angela gotta shout her out my daughter discovering her laugh and it just makes me happy to to watch it It, it puts a smile. Best, if that doesn't man. put a smile on your face, fuck out. So who who was making our laugh? What were they doing? It's gotta be Riley. Riley. Yeah, Riley, Riley was, was there. Riley. He was doing a little like peekaboo. peekaboo. Oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, nice. Just, Maybe you should like get him. your kids some sheets for their bed. Jeez. No, no <laughs> that was man. That was, <laughs> was on, man. That's the Riley's. That was in Riley's new room. Mattress. That was his. He. We just got a. He, we got a new bed, and holy fucker, beds ridiculously expensive now but anyway that's a story for another day well he got on our mattress and then he got jealous and pissed off and he wanted a new memory foam mattress so that was literally me undoing it and putting it in there and letting letting it expand and we threw the baby on there and then all laughing you know into (laughs) no no we're very economical my family (laughs) What kind of mattress do you think he's going <laughs> Angelo? <laughs> Give me some fucking names. Give this kid two fucking games. Give me some fucking names. Whatever Give this hourly... kid two fucking games. Give me some fucking names. 
That man is that. sleeping on any hotel that's got an hourly yeah. rate. Whatever mattress, it's right soiled. Now. It's very soiled. Whatever mattress it's <laughs> so soiled. Jamari Riddick, Joseph Walker. I've seen you guys be very active. My guy, Funkster Jones. Where is he yes. at tonight? I saw him earlier. I know he's always supporting us. And I, my last mm. shout-out is Brendan yeah. Levingston. You see, there's Funkster. Yeah, there's Funkster. Funkster's, Funkster's, Funkster's is, got Facebook issues. Listen, I think. Seems like I get a new account from him every week. He's the coolest man on earth. He is. Right there. Pure that bliss. Thing. Pure bliss. Tell him. <laughs> no, my guy, Brandon Levingston, always standing up for TTNL. Like, I see him fight off blog boys and narratives. I love that. And he'll give us, I like credit where credit is due. Thunder Girl, congratulations on the new house. Donnie McKendry is a new guy. Been, I see him coming on each and every week. Mikel Williams is in here tonight. Some people make their night. Josh E. Shane, you wanted to talk to Josh about his performance. It wasn't <sighs> up to par with no. We're, Give this fucking guy yep. tickets to the game. You know how I feel about stats. And we got him. <laughs> he get, sends us one video of Alan, the guy that video. we've been trashing, Alan Robinson. <laughs> hey, Rob, am I gonna see you back here next week or next year, Chicago? <laughs> 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 Fail you, <laughs> <laughs> you better so not be funny. drinking one of Claudio's co uh, Cherry Coke Zeros exactly. over there. Gotta, Thank God it's a regular We're Coke all Zeros. about accountability here. And I, I said all to Phil, I'm like, did you get the video from Joshy? He sent us what Phil's like before the game. He's like, I don't give a fuck what the score is. You get the naggy chant going. <laughs> yes. Everything. What then, did Joshy do? Nope. <laughs> didn't do it. He didn't do it, Cars. He's hey, right hey, there. Hey, Rob, brother, am I going to see you next year? Chicago, he calls A-Rob. Why not David Love Montgomery? Love you, boo. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I heard one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just awful. <laughs> we need the video. Can we pull it up to end the show, Shane? So start yeah. loading it. Guys, another great show. I want to thank Mike Tenerelli again and all you fans that continue to overwhelm us with your support, even those of you trying to cheat the system, like Jesse Dom, to try to get easy access to patron. However you're doing, we still appreciate the love and support. Keep it 100. We'll be back on Bears Hour Live this Sunday. Maybe there'll be news right afterwards. Breaking that down. Become a patron. Do it all. Love you guys. Keep it at 100. Next week, we will have a special surprise guest coming on, maybe to talk about the new coach, the new situation. So with that being said, we're going to leave you with our new original song, and then we'll come back. Hopefully, you stay around and see Josh East's terrible performance. Here's a performance over politics, though. Performance over politics. POP, performance over politics. DDP said, fuck a cap and arena tricks. We trying to build a dynasty out of heap of shit. McCaskey money rolling in, but that don't mean shit. To die hard fans, no matter where they move the stadium in Chicago land, you can't escape the aftermath. You can't win no stats and block boy math. The battle starts in the trenches. You can't fix Nagy's offense with 35 wrenches. Up in the nose, Bleeds, you smell the play call stenches. The sledge fields drop jewels like Osco. Tell the genius sell the team wholesale. Costco. Costco. <laughs> Performance over politics. Pop that ass, play the best.
You can have a ton of stats, but still be winless. Nagy still in this mill house. Influence McDonald's is hiring. McCaskey's grimace. Zero accountability. The wise cause regression. Performance is the plaza. The Bears stay at the West End. Guess it. Competition bringing out the best in. Anything you do but pace Bears vain obsession. Wrong personnel. This team never play the best. Performance over politics. The bear opposite. Virginia still smiling. Millhouse praising culture. George talking leaders reading script on his ulcer. Where the fuck is pace? Hiding behind the wise. P.O.P. Performance over politics. Performance over politics. Ryan and Matt are men of character. They are both, like Ted, outstanding leaders. I've been most impressed with how well they collaborate. Oh, yeah, they collaborate. Do we have that, Josh E? No, it's too uh, it's too long. So yeah, it's but too long. Just, just know that he it was an it was an epic failure. <laughs> <laughs> Josh E, gotta step it up next time. Man. These guys will tell you the best abilities is, is, is availability. Just know that Josh E ended his video with "Where's Cody Park yet?" <laughs> Cody Park yet? Video? I'm oh. a pretty good source. Chucky Mitchko. <laughs> Josh E from TTNL. <laughs> What's up, dude? Where the 